I'd like to welcome you all to tonight's annual meeting of the council and the first item is public session have we are we any members of the public registered with us no we don't no, no. thank you for that thank you. the next item on the agenda is the installation of chairman To elect, sorry, to elect a chairman for the remainder of the council year from 20 to 21. So now, please, we're looking at electing a chairman. I'd, I'd like to nominate Ray Chung. Really? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Right. Don't we Don't have we? a chairman Don't elect already? Shouldn't we just confirm the chairman elect? Yeah. No, you have to elect them correctly. Yeah. 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 So that's my want, nominee. Somebody yeah, wanting to override the rules? Have we got somebody wanting to override the rules? One of these new councillors? Good grief. Yeah. So does anyone do anyone like to come back on that one please anybody uh, we've, can. we've got we've got a nomination it needs to be seconded i'm happy to second it yeah are, are we a second no, sorry that's council agreed yeah, okay. yes and can can i look now for all in favor of that nomination please all in favour, a show of hands if you would. Please. Chair, do we, do we need to ask if there's other nominations, just, just to confirm there, if there are or aren't, before we go to the vote? Yeah. I thought, uh, do we have any other nominations for Chair of Council? Any other nominations for Chair of Council? No. Okay. Thank you for that. So, to nominate Council Alderley as Chair for the ensuing civic period, can I have a show of hands now please, those in favour? Yeah. Right, thank you very much indeed. Oh. I make that 16 votes in favour, Rich, what do you think? Sorry, you were breaking up. Was that 16? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, so at Could that I ask point, if, um, would... my camera's working at your end, please. Uh, you're in oh. red. Just no, you're red. not visible. He's not visible. No, there's, there's nothing on the, the. You've got your name on, but nothing else. It's in red. In which case, could you ask me to confirm my vote on each occasion tonight? Uh, because it's not a, a problem that I'm, I'm, I'm okay. not too sure what it is. <clears throat> yeah. Devoted this time. Yes. Okay. Right. So, Councillor Dalton. Yeah, I abstain. Yeah, we have abstained. Okay. Thank you for that. So, that nomination is accepted 16 votes in favor of that thank you very much indeed now i can uh, now pass over at this point to our new chairman uh, an annual formal occasion an official presentation of the chain of office which requires to be present and also photographs to be taken of that event so that clearly we cannot do at this stage so i will just at this stage ask our new chairman to take over the meeting as that from now thank you very much okay
Um, thanks, Trevor. Um, right, well, uh, sorry, I'm just checking. I'm, I'm supposed to now sign a declaration of agreement, so um, I'll have to do that um, next time I go into the office, I would, I would suggest. Um, thank you very much, all of you. Um, I'm, uh, I feel very honoured to be chair of Parish Council. I know there's a, a long history of the Parish Council, and I hope I can uh, uh, support it as best I can as chair um, with the support of um, all the council. Uh, obviously, this is a slightly unusual um, year. I think there's going to be far fewer face-to-face -face engagements, uh, so uh, it'll be a rather different experience um, um, for me and indeed for all of us and our and our community. So um, I know that there's lots of great things that the Parish Council can do, even uh, limited by um, only being able to meet virtually. So I look forward to um, working with all of you as we push forward on a range of things from the asset transfer of um, Honley Library to the climate emergency action plan and implementing some of that um, and hopefully getting the neighbourhood development plan um, through to its uh, last hurdle. Um, so uh, thank you for electing me and I look forward to working with you in the next, um, well, nine months or so through to uh, next May. Right, so um, I'm now chairing the meeting, so um, I will uh, do my best to make sure I spot everyone and I'll check with you, Councillor Dalton, if you can just um, say if you're wanting to um you know make make a point on something um because we as um, it's already been discussed we can't can't see you so you just have okay. to chip in and no, then you might be asked to, to wait while someone else speaks and then you can then you can make your point i'll try and behave okay <laughs> thank you very much right um so uh looking down the agenda and uh, the reason I'm looking to the side is just I've got um, my papers on the, the screen next to me, so it's not that I'm not looking at, um, look at all your happy faces. So, um, moving on, um, I need to thank uh, my predecessor, uh, Trevor, who's done a, done a great job, because I think it's been a pretty challenging year, both in terms of, um, sort of internally, in terms of having to deal with various governance reviews and uh, reviewing lots of our procedures, um, and uh, that's, that's been pretty... Uh, pretty tough from that point of view as well as obviously going into the Covid crisis and I think Trevor's um, been a very good um, safe pair of hands who has um, taken us admirably and uh, had to cope with the advent of technology for the council which is no mean feat so I um, extend a big big thanks to Trevor for all his hard work so I know he's um, very, been really committed to the role and I'd like to um, uh, sort of formally thank him for the, the amount of time and effort he puts into the parish council. So um, a big thank you to, uh, to Trevor and for Kath for supporting him through that time. And I can see lots of, uh, lots of hands, let's all do, do a virtual round of applause. <laughs> Thanks Trevor. Um, so actually now there's the opportunity for Trevor to, um, to make any comments he wishes to do as retiring chairman. So over to, back over to you Trevor. Although your screen has frozen. Oh, no, uh, okay. I'm there. Yep. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, just a few words here, please. Firstly, congratulations to yourself. Uh, all the very best for your term of office. And thank you for your work you've done over the past uh, period of months with regard to working as Vice Chairman. Very much, very much obliged to you for what you've done. Uh, the past two civic years or so have been a difficult and previously unknown experience for this council. Complete change to staff and personnel, independent external review of the financial governance of the Home Valley Parish Council and Home Valley Land Charity. Legal issues and problems involving Home Valley Parish Council. Thrown into the mix, national and local elections with many changes. With a global pandemic for most of the past year, whatever next? Do we have regional devolvement, regional devolved government to look forward to? Where will that leave us? Positive side, we have achieved a lot in a short time. Many thanks to all the team. It's worth it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Trevor. That's, thank you. That's, that's super. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, 
Okay, so now we now we move on to um, item 81, which is um, appointing a vice chair. So um, first item is to elect a vice chair for the remainder of this year, so up until um, May 2021. Um, so do we have any nominations, <laughs> vice chair, please? Can I nominate Michael Poxon, please? Okay, vice chair of the current council. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. Do we have a seconder for that? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Colling. Okay, do we have any um, alternatives to that proposal? Yep. Yeah, take, take that as a no. I can't see any hands, but I'm assuming Councillor Dalton, you, you don't have any comment on that? Nope. Oh, okay, thank you. Right, um, we'll take a vote on that then. We've got, um, so can we take a vote? I'm just trying, sorry, I'm just trying to spot where... Um, Michael is. Is he on the? Oh, there he is. Sorry, you're called Harry McCarthy, Michael. That's what's throwing me. Um, <laughs> if you could rename yourself, that'd be marvellous. Um, okay, can we take a vote then? All those in favour of um, Councillor Pogson um, being made vice chair of the parish council. Okay, and if Rich and Liz can count the votes. Can't see um, um, Paul Dixon's hands at all. Thank you. Um, in the dark. Okay, and then... I haven't got counted them oh, sorry. yet, sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay. Huh. Does it help if I tell you who they are? I make it 18. Yeah, I make it 18. 18 in favour. Okay. okay. Um, Councillor Dalton, how are you voting, please? I will vote in favour. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dalton. Um, have we got any abstentions? Uh, okay, can't see any. Have we got anyone against? We must have miscounted then. <laughs> okay, well, it's a, a majority majority vote, so yeah. Um, so, it's, so it's carried. Okay, congratulations, Councillor Bogson. Um, round of applause. Um, okay, and as as with the previous item, um, Councillor Pogson would normally be furnished with a with a chain, um, but we'll have to oh. do that at a different. Um, oh, it's me. Um, Stop it there. Right, I'm going to mute yeah. Councillor Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if if people get interrupted because um, of uh, domestic questions or whatever, please try and uh, remember to mute. Um, so we don't, uh, we're not too intrusive in your home life. Okay, um, so the newly elected vice chairman to return thanks for their election is the next item. So Councillor Poxon, you could demute and speak to us, please. Oh, thank you very much for your support. Um, you know, I'm really, I'm chuffed. Um, and I feel very proud to take up this role, uh, especially in light of some of the excellent vice chairmen and chairmen that have gone before me. On, um, I've always been very impressed with the people that's held office in this parish council and the other time that I've been there and I, and I hope to live up to those uh, standards that have been set before me. Super. Thank you very much. Um, okay, and then to thank the retiring vice chairman, you've, you've sort of covered that already, Councillor Pogson, unless you want to add anything else. Thank you to Councillor Hogley for your sterling job previously and I hope to be able to support you in your role as chair. Marvellous. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much Councillor Dogson. I look forward to working with you over the next uh, next year. Um, okay, so uh, we'll move on to item 82, um, which to accept apologies for absence. Liz? No any? apologies. No apologies, okay. All right, uh, moving on. Um, 83 to receive. Could, um, Sorry. I asked, are there any uh, councillors who are not in attendance who haven't sent, sent apologies? Yes, Daryl Gould is not here. Thank you. Okay, um, 83 to receive any expression of interest and items on the agenda from councillors and staff. Does anyone have any? Y yes. Um, Councillor Dalton, do you have one? It's a trivial matter, but I have received a gift um, from uh, from the new uh, employee of the council. Uh, it's a, it's a small matter. Very nice buns. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Okay. 
Thank you for declaring it. Um, I think, is it? I imagine if they're buns, they fall beneath the, uh, the, well, the one muffin. value. Muffins. I don't want to get into baking disputes, but um, there were muffins, I believe. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that, Councillor Dalton. Um, Okay, moving on to 84, to receive any requests for dispensations um, from DPIs? No, nothing received. Okay, nothing on that, thank you. Mm. Okay, um, item 85, this is just a note. Um, the Kirtley's Council Monitoring Officer has published a decision notice regarding one of the councillors who've been found to breach the Code of Conduct. Um, this notice um, should be on the Kirtley's Council website. I'm not sure it's actually on there yet, but it's due to be shortly. So. Um, just for councillors to note, there'll be a future meeting to discuss that. Noted. Okay, so we'll move on to item 86, um, which is to welcome someone, because it's to note that we have a new um, Climate Emergency Action Plan coordinator, um, which is Michelle, who is joining us to introduce herself to everybody. I'm sure um, some of you may know Michelle already, but I will hand over to Michelle to say a bit about who she is and what she's going to do for us. Hello, everybody, um, and those that know me and those that don't. So um, I'm Michelle, and uh, my background before joining, um, taking up this role is uh, communications and marketing um, and events, etc. And part of my role as the climate emergency coordinator is to take the very um, detailed and very uh, forward-looking action plan and actually make some of these things come into fruition over the next year. We won't be able to do it all, but we will actually make a lot of it happen and stuff that will count and make a difference to the Valley. Okay, Super. thank you for that, Michelle. Um, so you'll be uh, doing lots of work through the um, uh, Climate Emergency Committee, but yes. um, I'm sure we will hear of uh, lots of the projects that you'll be working on because a lot of them affect all elements of the council, not just the um, sort of within the Climate Change Committee. Yeah, so, it's a very broad basis, so there will be a lot of you that will actually end up working alongside, I'll well, be working alongside you, so yeah. Brilliant. Okay, well thank you very much and welcome and um, we look forward to all, all working with you. Thank you. Um, Okay, we will, um, in the spirit of time and having a fairly packed agenda, we will uh, move on. So I'm sure we will, <laughs> you can stay with us, Michelle, if you wish. Um, I or we'll, we'll say goodbye. Well. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Very well. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. see you soon, Michelle. Okay, Thanks thank for joining you. us. Okay, right. bye. Cheers. Okay, right, the next, next item um, is item 87, which is about appointing the standing committees. Um, as, as you'll know, we have, um, well, six standing committees plus the staffing committee. Um, but the staffing committee's membership is driven by the um, membership and, and chairs of the previous six committees. Um, so as Liz circulated, um, and I think there's, there was an updated list that was sent separately in the last, last few days, I think. Is that right, Liz? That is, it, that uh, is right. And I think the people, I think some people won't have the updated one. That might be Councillor Paul Dixon, Councillor Dalton, and anyone else who only really gets paper um, copies. So the addition, can I just say, the last addition was to add uh, Councillor Sweeney and Councillor um, Lockley to the list. Okay. What, what I suggest I do so that everyone and particularly those who maybe had a previous list are aware of the proposed members is I'll go through each committee and read out the list from the version two, which I think is the, the up to date one with Councillor Sweeney and um, Councillor Lockley on. Um, now, obviously, the, we sort of trialled this year people filling in a form in advance. And that was the intention behind that was just to get people thinking about which committees they wanted to um, be part of. and effectively spread the work of the of the council so that people were able to tailor things according to their interests and then when they commit to a committee um, hopefully where possible they'll be able to attend all the meetings and and help um, push forward the actions that come out of those meetings um, so um, there was an our when we updated our scheme of uh, delegation um, we gave a sort of indication of the maximum number of people who ought to be on each committee um, and we haven't actually hit that maximum on any of them 
so there is still space for people who um, should they decide uh, tonight that they wish to join a committee that they hadn't previously expressed interest in they're very welcome to um, to do so so I'll, I'll ask people at the end of reading out the list if that's if that's okay so um, we'll work down the table that I've been given so the first one is the community assets um, support committee and as it stands um, we currently have the have the following following people um, so we've got um, uh, we've got Councillor Blacker, um, Councillor Kath Bellamy, Councillor Colling, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Brook, Councillor Dixon, Councillor East, Councillor Carey and myself. So that's nine, nine members. So is there anyone else who wishes to join the um, Community Assets Support Committee? Okay, can't see any hands. Okay, so is everyone content that those members just mentioned will be, be those appointed to the Standing Committee? Everyone happy with that? Okay. Um, I don't think, Liz, we don't have to take a formal vote on that, do we? No, we just it's just that. accepted, okay. yeah. Okay, all right, okay, thank you for that. Um, we'll do the appointing of chairs um, slash vice chairs as the next item so that this is just the members of each committee so the next one finance and management so again we could have up to 13 and we've got currently got nine um, so these are as follows so it's for finance and management standing committee we've got councillor greaves councillor blacker councillor colling councillor paul dixon councillor um, die hall councillor michael pogson councillor paul davies uh, myself again and councillor um, Joe Sweeney. So is there anyone else who wishes to join those committees? Who is not on that list? Um, can't see anyone? Okay. All right, so those, um, we'll take it that those councillors are therefore appointed to the Finance and Management Standing Committee. Okay, moving on to planning. Um, again, we have a recommendation of up to 13. See, I know in the past we talked about ideally having people who represent each ward within the parish boundaries, uh, which would be preferable. Um, but I think between the members of the planning committee that are appointed, um, we'll have to make sure that there's clarity on which wards people cover if it needs to be beyond their own, their own ward. That's sort of what we've done in recent years. So um, the People who'd expressed interest on the planning standing committee were Councillor Mary Blacker, Councillor Kath Bellamy, Councillor Pat Colling, Councillor Judith Roberts, Councillor Tom Dixon, Councillor Paul Dixon, Councillor Daryl Gould and myself, Councillor Hogley. Does anyone else wish to join the planning committee? Oh, I've got a hand up from Councillor Pogson. Oh, hang on. Are you wanting to say something or you want to join it, Councillor Pogson? Um, just to add me to the committee, if that's okay. <coughs> okay, so we'll take it that it's the list of people I read out plus um, Councillor Pogson. Okay, so moving on to um, Publications and Communications Committee. Um, again, this is now up to 13. Um, so it has a rather disappointing list of only five people who want to be on it. So, um, so please <coughs> think about whether you can <laughs> offer support in terms of improving our um, communications, obviously. Uh, events and things that are likely to be limited over this this next year but um, clearly there's always work to be done in terms of communicating better uh, with our community. So um, the five councillors who put themselves forward so far are Councillor Kath Bellamy, Councillor Jason Brook, Councillor Doug Scurry, um, myself and Councillor Ben Lockley. Does anyone else wish to join said committee? Is Ben Lockley here tonight? Yes. Yes he is yeah. All right. Okay, no one else is tempted? Nope. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, so those five, five members um, will be those on the Publications Communications Committee. Moving on, two more to go. Um, service provision, so we've got up to 14 on this particular one. Um, and the, how many have we got? Four, we've got um, eight, eight people who've put their names forward. We've got Councillor Kath Bellamy, Councillor Mary Blacker, Councillor Jason Brook, Councillor Tom Dixon, Councillor Donald Firth, Councillor Bernie Feeney, 
Councillor Michael Pogson and Councillor Sean East. So does anyone else wish to join those members? Yes, I'd like to join that one, please. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roberts. So we will assume we've got the members that are listed plus Councillor Roberts. Okay. All right, final standing committee aside from staffing, which is um, Climate Emergency Committee. So we've currently got six names on the list. We've got um, Councillor Sarah Sheard, Councillor Daryl Gould, Councillor Glyn Barker, Councillor Paul Davies, Councillor Trevor Bellamy and myself. Does anyone else wish to join the Climate Emergency Committee? Yes, I'd like to join that, please. I would like to be on that committee, please. Um, I'd okay. like to be on as well, please. Uh, oh, hang on. Um, right, we had, to, I should, sorry, I should have read out the um, limits on it, shouldn't I? It was um, up to eight elected members, so we had six, and now we've got Councillor Firth, Councillor Roberts and Councillor Hall expressing interest in joining. Can I propose that we up the group to nine people, so fit uh, people, please? <coughs> can I not propose that we take the group up to nine people, so we can, our members can be, you know, fitted in? Um, okay, I think the, sorry, I'm just going to quickly check what we said in our scheme of delegation a minute. Is Councillor Glyn Barker there tonight? Yes. He's, he's waving a few. No, I'm not able to see him. No, I'm um, not able to see him, I'm afraid. Okay, he, he is there, um, Councillor Roberts. Right. Uh, Just that there seems to be a, a, a quite a lot, an absence of various ones over a lot of the committees um, <clears throat> that have happened throughout the, the year that just haven't turned up to committees and that I feel it's unfair that um, you know people are being allowed being able to go on to certain committees when uh, people aren't turning up to committees that they put the names down for. <clears throat> Okay, well, I would, I would expect uh, members who are agreeing to attend committees will make every effort to attend those those committees. Obviously, um, uh, things, things crop up that sometimes make that not possible. But I would hope people would um, commit as much as they as much as they can. Um, the only thing I'm just just wondering about the climate emergency committee because it has um, can I can I just seek advice from the current chair of said committee as members who don't have voting rights as it currently stands on the committee uh, presumably they will be reappointed at the first um climate change sorry climate emergency committee meeting is that correct yeah that's that's correct the aim is <coughs> next week's meeting um so they've they've been here invited to express their interest to be co-opted again and yeah we would as councillors then whoever the councillors are on the committee uh would vote um one way or the other to accept those uh, individuals so yes you're right so there's there's up to 10 co-optees uh, allowed on the on the um link to the committee okay so so to enable councillor hall councillor roberts and councillor firth to join said committee um we need to agree to extend the membership of the committee to include nine elected members because our scheme of delegation currently suggests eight elected members so does, does anyone want to propose to do that i've already i've already done that council lovely okay apologies councillor okay because because the uh, sound broke up a bit so if we got so councillor um paul dixon are you seconding councillor brooks proposal to extend it to nine members okay right can we take a, a vote on um proceeding with that please so we have nine elected members on the climate change climate emergency committee right, hang on. i can the... see six votes in favor and i can see one two three four thank you Thank you. Uh, can people make their hands clear, please? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can see, I can certainly see eight. Okay. Um, Councillor Dalton, do you have a, a vote on this? Uh, no. 
Uh, I'll abstain. Okay. Um, okay, so I think we had eight in favour of that. Um, do we have any votes against that? I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, hang on. Eight. Eight. Is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Um, so we have eight, four, and eight. Oh, hang on. Sorry, Councillor Colin. It's about ten. Is Councillor Barker holding a pen up? Yeah, I could count ten as well. Okay, so sorry, we've got... Um, Shall I, shall I tell you who I can see and tell me if, you, if I haven't said your name? Yeah, I've got 10 as well now. You've I've got, got 10, 10. 10 against? Yeah. Okay, in which, in which case, um, <laughs> if we are therefore limited to eight elected members, we will need to take um, votes on who those members are unless someone out of the three who wish to join and the six who already put their names forward wish to step back from the committee. I wish to be removed from the list if that's the case. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Hall. Okay, so um, thank you for that. So we're going to have, so the members of the um, Climate Emergency Committee will be um, <coughs> the six that are previously on the list, which Councillors Sheard, Gould, Barker, Davies, Trevor Bellamy, and myself, plus Councillor Roberts and Councillor Firth. Okay, All right, thank you for that. Chair, didn't yeah. Councillor Colling indicate that she wanted to go on this committee or, or she withdrawn from it? No. Consideration? She's, no. she's not on the list, Councillor Graves. No, I thought she said she... Oh, it's, it's fine. Okay. Councillor Hogley, can, may I make a comment on that item on the agenda before it closes? Okay, if you wish, Councillor Dalton, yeah. Uh, ju just to say that... Uh, Councillors, not all councillors expressed the preference for committees they wish to serve on, not, notwithstanding the sanctions that have been placed against me, um, which I, I acknowledge. Uh, it should be recorded that I would wish to serve the electors on the following committees, uh, the Planning Committee and the Climate Emergency Committee. Okay, that's noted, Councillor Dalton. Okay. Right, um, so thank you for that. So we've got members of the um, standing committees. So um, the staffing committee will um, be established based on the appointment of the uh, office holders, which is what we're going to do under item 88, so the next item. So um, we've got um, the first one is to vote for a chairman and vice chairman of the Community Assets Support Committee. Um, now, I'm just gonna have to find the list, which I've just foolishly closed, um, which we were just looking at before. Because um, people, again, were asked to indicate if they were interested in standing for um, office, but that doesn't preclude people from saying tonight that they wish to do so. So um, let me just try and find the... Let like me to say while you're looking. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Councillor Kath Bellamy is interested, Councillor Brooke, Councillor Tom Dixon and Councillor Pat Colling have all expressed an interest. Okay, so do we have any... Can I, can I nominate Councillor Kath Bellamy, please, as Chairman of the Community Assets Support Committee? <clears throat> okay, do we have a seconder for that? Yeah, I'll second that, Councillor Dalton. Okay. Okay. Do we have a counter proposal, <laughs> to Tom Dixon? Yep, yeah, I'd like to propose a uh, Councillor Pat Colling to be chairman of that committee. Okay. Do we have a seconder for that? Say yeah, I seconded. Okay, Councillor Blacker seconding that. Okay. So, um, do we have any other nominations? Can't, can't see any. Um, right, so um, let's vote on um, 
I guess we do the second one first, since it's effectively a council proposal. Um, so can we take a vote on Councillor Colling, please? So all those in favour of Councillor Colling being chair of um, the committee, please. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I can, oh, hang on, thirteen. Is it thirteen, Liz? One, two, I three. made it twelve the first time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, twelve, seven. Oh, I can see fourteen, actually. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, fourteen now, sorry. So I keep your hands up, sorry, folks. Okay, um, which is carried, it's 14, because that's a majority. Okay, so I don't think we need to take votes against that particularly, do we Liz? I don't know, I've never done this before. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I don't see the point. I, you want a deputy now? I think we should do votes against and, and abstentions as well, just for the record. Okay, all right. Thank okay, you, Councillor Dixon. All right, do we have any votes against Councillor Colling being, being chair? Okay. Two. Two. Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote? Uh, I've got no an interest. I seconded um, uh, Councillor Bellamy and that was rejected. Uh, I abstain. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll vote in favour of Councillor Colling. If you need mine as well. Okay, so. Madam, um, Madam, Madam Chairman, can I just make yeah. one point? Yeah. When did we change the rules? The rules were always that the only people that voted were the people that were on the committee. It has always been the committee that made their own decision about chairman and vice chairman. We've got 14 people voting there, where most of them aren't on the committee. And I think it should be the committee that decided who they want as their chairman. Yes, you're quite correct. That, that, was, always that was always policy in the past, and I think Councillor Perth, Councillor Roberts, uh, but Councillor Bellamy will back me up on that. Yeah, quite correct. I, I don't think it's in the current standard. Yeah, Councillor Dixon. I, th I think just to clarify, I think the, the election of the vice chair can be done by the committees. Yeah. But my understanding is that the chairs are always elected by um, full council because it's one of the because within within our scheme of delegation um, under item um, three point one, we have appointing the um, chairman and vice chairman of the council, which is done by the full council, but also appointing the chairman and vice chairman of all the standing committees. Oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's not. That's never been. That's never been the case in the last thirty-seven years. Well, I'm afraid that's the yeah, case in our current standing orders. Can't it is now, Paul. <laughs> that's Madam the Chairman, difference. Can I clarify something there for you, which might help Councillor Dixon? If we now came chairman, we did change the policies that the, the chairmen were delegated to the full council on the full council meeting. That's when it was all changed. I so, know. Since I've been chairman of the when I was chairman of the committee council, we changed policy so that the full council elected chairmen of each committee, not the groups. But as you've currently said, we all often left the vice chairman to the group itself. I hope that helps. Yeah. Thank, thank could you. I, could good. I interject? Could I interject here? Could could the chairman or the clerk read out the relevant part of the um, uh, standing orders? I believe, uh, Rich, it's um, section 26, item B, that may refer. That's certainly the latest copy of the standing orders that I have. And it says, all office holders, bracket, with the exemption of the staff development review coordinator, bracket, will be appointed by the full council council at its annual meeting each year and will serve until the next annual meeting of the council full stop that's correct that's quite that's quite right councillor don thank you um but uh, it is true to say that in previous years we have um delegated the appointment of vice chairs 
um, within the committees to those standing committees. And in fact, that's mentioned in our scheme of delegation where um, the election of a vice chair from within its own meeting can be so delegated by full council if full council wishes to do that. I suspect that's what we need to do. I uh, have a motion to give that, uh, delegate those appointments from full council to the respective committees. Well, if someone wishes to, so we've got, just to recap, we've now got um, Councillor Colling as chair of Community Asset Support Committee. If someone wishes to propose that the appointment of vice chair of the Community Asset Support Committee is done at the first um, Community Asset Support Committee meeting, they're very welcome to do so. Councillor Brooke. Can I, Council, Council, can I tell me to be the vice chair of this committee, please? Okay, does anyone want to second that? No, what? Councillor Brooke has proposed that um, Councillor Kath Bellamy be elected as Vice Chair of CASC. I'll second that. Okay, seconded by Councillor okay. Dixon. Do we have any alternatives? Does Kath Bellamy want to be Vice Chairman? Councillor Bellamy? Yeah. Uh, yes, no problem being Vice Chair. Okay, uh, do we... Uh, okay, thank you, um, Councillor still... Bellamy. Okay, yeah, have, we got, have we got I'll, anyone I'll, else? We, we've already got it seconded, Councillor Roberts, so um, unless we've got any other nominations. No. Uh, Councillor Bellamy is up to be chair, though, of one of the other committees, remember? It doesn't matter. Does it, it doesn't matter. No. Of course it doesn't matter now, does it? No. no. Yeah. no. Okay, no. so if we have no other nominations for vice chair of CASC, then um, I, can we take a quick vote to agree that Ca Councillor Kath Bellamy will be Vice Chair of Community Asset Support Committee, please. Could I, ask, could I ask for a clarification on those comments about it doesn't matter now? Um, is, is it not the case that um, no councillor may serve in more than one role with the exception of the Vice Chairman of the Council and the Staff Development Review Coordinator? No, that's item not true 20, anymore. 26C. Has that been amended? Yes. In the standing orders? Yes. yes. When, it, it, when was it amended? I've not, I've not had any notification <laughs> of it. Well, it was passed at um, one of the council meetings on Zoom. I can't remember which one. My 29th of June 2020. Yeah. Quietly through the back door. We approved the standing orders. Well, I did point out those changes in the agenda. I said it, there were changes to how office holders were appointed and who, who were eligible. So it was on the agenda. Yeah, Councillor Tom Dixon. Yeah, um, additionally as well, the standing orders have been sent out to everybody as well for people to read through and study. And and like the, the, the changes were actually, I think they're in italics, so they're quite easy to, to tell. So it wasn't through the back door, no. It's been quite widely advertised. Okay, so so moving back to um, Councillor Kath Bellamy, um, I think we we had sufficient hands to elect her as Vice Chair of CASC. So I can confirm that Councillor Kath Bellamy will be Vice Chair of Community Asset Support Committee. Thank you, Councillor Bellamy. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next um, next one, which was um, finance and management. Um, I think the list I have, which I must admit, Liz, is not the second version because I can not find the second version this minute, but I had Councillor Paul Dixon and Councillor Pogson as potential chairs. That's right, and the only change to that was that uh, Councillor Sweeney wanted to be considered as vice chair for that committee. Okay, so do we have any nominations, um, either from those two people willing to put themselves forward as chair or from anyone else within that committee um, who wish to be chair of finance and management? I, I want to nominate myself. Paul Dixon, please, for the finance and management chairman. Okay, thank mm. you, Councillor Robert. <coughs> for that. Yes. Councillor Brooke, were you seconding? Or? No, can I uh, nominate Councillor Poxon, please, to be chairman of that council, please? 
Okay, right, we need, um, so we need some seconders. We've got, um, so does anyone wish to second Councillor Roberts? Um, yeah. Councillor Paul Dixon. I will do that. Seconded by Trevor. Yeah. Apologies, Councillor Hall. Are you trying to second? Or? Okay. Um, so we have a nomination, a valid nomination for um, Councillor Paul Dixon. And does anyone wish to second Councillor Brooks' nomination of Councillor Pogson? Yeah, I'll, I'll second. Councillor Davies. Okay, so we'll start with the second one. So. Um, can we take votes in favour of Councillor Pogson being the Chair of the Finance and Management Committee, please? So keep your hand, hands up while this counts, please. Eleven. Ten, eleven. I can see eleven, Liz. Yeah, me too. Okay, and... All those against? I can see four. Four. Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote? I abstain. Abstain, okay. I'll abstain as well, Liz. I'll also abstain as well. Councillor Tom Dixon, abstaining. Okay. And Councillor Greaves. And Councillor Greaves. Oh, and Councillor Sheard, I think, abstaining. Have you got your hand up, Sarah? Are you abstaining from that vote? So, sorry, did we have 11 in... So one, two, three, four, five Sorry. abstentions, 11, four, four, and four votes against. Okay, so now can we take a vote on Councillor Paul Dixon? So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six. Six in favour. And all those against? One, two, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Ten. I think I could see eleven, to be honest. But oh, right. Sorry. One, <laughs> sorry, hands up again if you were against Councillor Paul Dixon's election to that. One, two, three. Yeah, I think there were eleven. Yep. So, as a result of that um, vote, thank you for um, voting. Oh, sorry, Councillor Dalton, did you have a vote on that one? I'll abstain on that. That was the same vote position, wasn't it? Yeah, abstain. Yeah, yeah, it was abstain for both. Yeah. Um, I'll abstain as well, um, Liz. Me too. That's Councillor Greaves. Uh, Councillor Greaves abstaining as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, on the basis of that, um, Councillor Pogson is um, appointed as chair to Finance and Management um, Standing Committee. Um, now, do we have any proposals for vice chair of finance management? Councillor Pogson? I propose Councillor Joe Sweeney. Wait, I've got chance, Joe. I'll second. Okay, thank you, Councillor Davies. Do we have any counter proposals to that? Mm. Uh, Kath? Sure. Councillor Kath, follow me. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Senior Dixon for Vice Chair. No, thank you. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, Councillor Dixon. No, no, thank you. You don't want to be nominated for Vice Chair. No, no. Nominated for Vice Chairman, no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, do we have any other options, or um, should we take a vote on Councillor Sweeney? being Vice Chair of Finance Management. Okay, all those in favour of Councillor Sweeney, please. Okay, that's, yeah, that's a, one, two, three. 13. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, for completeness, we'll take votes against. Are there any votes against? One, two, three, four. Four. Okay, four against. And no, put that down as five. I'll, I'll vote against. Five. Okay, thank you, mm. Councillor Dalton. That's six then. It was six, yeah. yeah. That's the first as well. Okay, um, we'll assume all others are abstentions unless they wave at me. Okay, right. Well, thank you for that. So, um, so we now have for finance management, we have Councillor um, Pogson um, elected as chair of said committee, um, supported by Councillor Sweeney as vice chair. Okay, moving on. To yeah, uh, Councillor Greaves, I'm just stepping out of the meeting for five minutes. I will be coming back. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, Councillor Greaves. See you soon. Right, um, now on to the planning committee. So um, on the list I have, we have Councillor Blacker and Councillor Roberts who have put themselves forward as prospective chairs of the committee. So do we have any nominations for either of those or anyone else who is on the committee? Madam um, Chairman, could I nominate Councillor Roberts, please? Okay, thank you, Paul. And I'll second that. Okay. Do we have any um, other nominations? Yeah. Councillor Davies? Yeah, nominate uh, Councillor Blacker. Okay, do we have anyone second that? Councillor Colling. Okay, do we have any other nominations? No. Nope. Okay, so we'll start with the second one again. So Councillor Blacker. Um, all those in favour of Councillor Blacker being appointed to Chair of Planning. Put your hands up nice and high, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. They can see. Okay, all those against. One, two, three. <laughs> Councillor Dalton, do you have a view? Yeah, against. Okay, so that's five against. <laughs> then. Councillor uh, Madam Chairman. Sorry, Councillor Brooke, what did you say? I'm abstaining from this vote. Okay, so any other abstentions? I'm gonna, I'm gonna abstain. This. Okay. Um, so apologies, what was the max? We had 11, didn't we? 12. 12 in favour. 12, 4, 5 against. 12, 4. Okay. Um, well, with, with 12, 4, that's a majority. Um, so Councillor Blacker is appointed chair of the planning committee. Okay. So vice chair of the planning committee. Um, I don't know if, is Councillor Roberts willing to be considered as vice chair of the planning committee? No. No, okay. I think not. No. And I shall also take myself off the planning committee altogether. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm sorry about that, Councillor Roberts, but thank That's you. That's all right. Thank you for confirming. Okay, so do we have um, any um, nominations from the current members. Perhaps Liz could remind us who the members are of the committee and whether anyone from that list is willing to put themselves forward as vice chair of planning. Councillor Blacker, Councillor Kath Bellamy, Councillor Colling, mm. Councillor Tom Dixon, <coughs> Councillor Paul Dixon, Councillor Gould, Councillor Hogley and Councillor Pogson. Okay, um, Councillor Kath Bellamy's got a hand up. Um, I'm coming off uh, the planning as well. Okay. Thank you, Kath. Madam, Madam Chair, can I suggest that we put take that to the uh, committee and let them decide the own vice chairman? Yeah. Is someone Thanks. happy to second that? I have a comment. Um, is there any uh, members of the planning committee that are willing to serve as uh, vice chairman of the planning committee? Well, uh, Councillor Dalton, by deferring it to um, the first meeting of the planning committee... Then yeah, we, we won't know if there's anybody willing to serve in that role <laughs> now. And I'd, I'd like, it in, on, on behalf of the electorate, to know if there's any of those members of the planning committee 
who would be willing to serve as vice chairman of the planning committee and it would be nice to know that from those members who are proposing to sit on that committee especially when you've got a councillor here who would be willing to serve as vice chairman on the planning committee or would have been if, if the exceedingly competent um current uh, planning committee chairman had uh, returned her position and, and got voted on but anyway Thank we you will comments, find Jeff. out whether there's any willing volunteers for the vice planning or we won't well we can take a vote on the proposal that councillor brooke made which is at the first meeting of the planning committee from amongst those who are serving on the planning committee um, a vice chair will be sought is there is there any point in doing that for one and not for all the rest well we, we are where we are councillor um, dixon so as has been ha highlighted in standing orders we are able to delegate it should we wish but if we can appoint the um, chairs and vice chairs now which is what we're doing then that's what we're trying to do but clearly in this instance we don't have people who've um, thought previously about becoming vice chair of planning um, clearly a couple of uh, members have decided to stand down from the committee so personally i think we should wait until that first meeting of the planning um, but well, can, can I propose that we put Pat Collins forward as vice chairman? <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on a sec. Um, Councillor Collins, can you just respond to that, and I'll come to you, Councillor Tom Dixon. I'm willing to do it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Collins. So, I'll second that nomination. Okay, uh, can I just can I Tom Dixon wish to say before we um, take a vote on that, unless we have any other nominations? Yeah, well, b before we've taken it to um, another meeting, like the, the committee to decide on vice chairman, when we're not being certain. And um, the two people that put themselves forward to be chairman, one of them has decided now not to be on the committee. So whoever decides to be vice chairman, the other people on the committee might want to think it over. So I'd, I'd, I'd second uh, Jason's proposal of waiting until the next committee meeting and then uh, the committee can decide amongst themselves. That, that, we, we've done that often before, so I think that makes sense rather than somebody possibly making a rash decision about it tonight. And um, I didn't appreciate Council of Personal Laughs as well about suggesting Pat Collins. I don't see what's so funny about that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dixon. So can I, can I suggest... <laughs> Therefore, that we take the original, <coughs> which was the council, which was what Councillor Brooke suggested, which is given that um, it's evident that people who hadn't previously thought to put themselves forward for the vice chair role of planning um, uh, now will have time to think about it in advance of the next planning meeting, and we delegate responsibility for appointing the vice chair from amongst those members at the next planning meeting. That was, I know that was seconded by someone, but I haven't written down who it was. So can, can I suggest we take a vote on um, delegating the choice of vice chair to the first planning meeting? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fourteen. Oh, fourteen or fifteen. Majority <laughs> anyway. Okay, that's that motion's carried, but I'd encourage um, all members of the planning committee, including Councillor Colling, who may, may well wish to do, do the role, um, <laughs> to um, think about it uh, in advance of said planning committee. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. Could you so, just record the against votes and the abstentions, please? Okay, well, well we, don't, we don't really need to because it was a majority of delegating the... No, uh, I'd like to know who's voting against it and who's abstaining. Thank you. Right, does anyone vote against the deferral of the, or the delegation of the decisions to the planning committee, please? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, Councillor Roberts. But I'm not even on that committee now. <coughs> okay, any abstentions? Could I just say that mm. prior, to the, prior to this meeting, I believe that it was already conspired and already approved as to what was going to happen on the planning committee tonight by a telephone call that I received during the week. Councillor Roberts, we are in the main part of the meeting, we're um, not going to discuss what telephone calls may or may not have, have happened or 
um, other things that are spurious to the, to the rest of the meeting. That we're, going, we're following the due <laughs> process of well. nominations and seconding for roles and they are taken by vote to the full council. Um, Councillor Tom Dixon. Yeah, um, I'd like to remind Councillor Roberts of meetings that we used to attend uh, uh, at the Conservative Club in Honley. Uh, uh, Councillor Tom Dixon, can we... And can I ask members to um, let's bring focus back onto the meeting that we're trying to um, appoint standing committees so that we can serve our community in the best way we can. Okay, moving on to publications and communications standing committee. Um, we have uh, two people who um, originally put their names forward as respective chairs. Um, it was myself and Councillor Harry. Um, given I'm chair of council, I'm happy to step away from um, being chair. Um, so, Councillor Brook. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to nominate you as chairman to be the again because you do such a wonderful job. It'd be silly to waste your talents. That's very kind, Councillor Brook. Uh, I'll second that. Well. I'll go and get it. Okay, I did the um, but what I've what I've said is I I'm willing to consider the vice vice chair role, but um, given the time requirements of being chair of the council, I don't feel it's appropriate to also now be chair of publications and communications, albeit I'll still be a member of it. So, unfortunately, can I take the nomination back then? Back, Councillor Carry then, Madam Chairman, please. Hey, thank you, Councillor Brooke. Do we have anyone to second that? Yeah, yeah. Second, I second that. Okay, Councillor Blacker, thank you. So can we take a vote of all those in favour of um, Councillor Carey being Chair of the Publications and Communications Committee, please? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thir thirteen, I think I can see. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those again. What about Councillor Dalton? Has he got yeah, I'm just going to ask. Sorry, Councillor Dalton. How can I vote? Uh, yeah, I voted uh, against. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dalton. Any other votes against Councillor Carey being chair of the committee? You don't Yeah, I can see four against. Okay, and any abstentions? I'll abstain on this. Okay, so Councillor um, Douglas Carey is um, duly appointed as Chair of Publications and Communications Committee. Point of order. Yes, Councillor Dalton. Douglas Carey isn't a member of the council. He's co-opted as Dalton, a, he is a full member vacancy of the council and appointed in the not in order to appoint someone to the um, council, uh, one of the key positions of the council when they're not a member of the council. Councillor Dalton, <laughs> Councillor Carey is a full member of the council as are we all. He was, uh, the process by which he became a full member of the council was through co-option but he has just the same rights and voting role and ability to serve on the committees as um, other members. So moving on to um, Vice Chair of the Publications and Communications Committee if we wish to do that now. Councillor Brooke. Can I nominate yourself, Councillor Hobley? Okay, thank you. Does anyone want to second that? Seconded. Okay, thank you. So all those in favour of um, myself, Councillor Hobley being Vice Chair of Publications and Communications, please put your hands up. Okay, one, two, three, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, I think. Oh. Oh, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Can, can I, can I just, Sorry, yeah. can I just ask, I missed uh, our phone were ringing, um, what are we voting on now? Well, we're voting on Vice Chair of Publications and Communications Committee. Oh, and it, right. Um, Councillor Brooks nominated me as Vice Chair. <laughs> Right. Okay. As vice chair. Yes, as vice chair. As vice chair. Yes. Right. So, do we have anyone voting against um, the nomination of vice chair? With me as vice chair. 
Um, Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote on this? Abstain. Abstain. I'll take that as an abstention. Okay, so that's carried. So um, I will be Vice Chair of Publications and Communications Committee. Right, so service provision. Goodness, the committees keep coming. Right, <laughs> service provision. We have um, two people on the list. I have, uh, unless Liz has any others, which were Councillor Kath Bellamy and Councillor Jason Brook were put themselves forward as prospective um, chairs of this committee. Is there anyone else here? I'd like to nominate Kath Bellamy for chairman. Seconded. Okay, um, so Councillor Kath Bellamy's nominated. Do we have any other nominations? Councillor Pogson? I'd like to uh, nominate Councillor Jason Brook. Okay, do we have anyone second that? <coughs> okay, Councillor Colling seconded that. Right, so uh, we'll take the first one with Councillor Brook. So all those in favour of Councillor Brook being Chair of Service Provision, please put your hands up. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think I can see eleven, Liz. Yeah. Um, okay, all those against? Okay, one, two, three, four. Four. Okay, and Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote on this one? Abstain. Okay, abstain. I'd like to abstain as well, Chair. Okay, thanks, Tom. I'll abstain as well. Okay, and then, so, do, do we have 11 in favour, Liz? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay, well, we'll take, in which case we need to take a vote on Councillor Kath Bellamy, which was the other um, nomination for chair. So uh, we had Councillor Roberts propose it and Councillor Paul Dixon second it. So all those in favour of Councillor Kath Bellamy being chair of service provision, please. One, two, three, four, five, that's five. Okay, all those, oh, six, sorry, six. Um, Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote on this? Sorry, is this for the vice chair? No, this is still for the chair of service. I abstain. I abstain. Okay, thank you. Okay, all those against Councillor Kath Bellamy being chair of service provision? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and any abstentions? Okay, so um, on the basis of those votes, Councillor Brook is um, uh, appointed as Chair of Service Provision Standing Committee. Okay, thank you for that. So um, I guess the question is if Councillor Kath Bellamy is willing to consider the Vice Chair role for nomination. Yes. A thumbs up. Okay, marvellous. Thank you, Councillor Kath Bellamy. So, um, would anyone like to nominate um, Councillor Kath Bellamy for Vice Chair? Yes, I'll nominate. Okay, yeah, so Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Colling. Okay, so all those in favour of Councillor Kath Bellamy being Vice Chair of Service Provision? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Um, okay, any against? So we have 17 in favour. Councillor Dalton, do you have a view on Councillor Catherine? In favour. In favour, okay. Okay, any abstentions? Completeness? No, okay. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Kath Bellamy. You are um, appointed to Vice Chair of Service Provision. Thank you you think right climate emergency i'm getting there <laughs> done five right climate emergency standing committee um, no, no. see we had um councillor roberts and councillor firth um uh, in, in to the um uh six who were, who were on there um, and we had um councillor davies and councillor trevor bellamy 
um, indicated they'd be interested in standing as chair for this committee. So do we have any nominations, please? Yeah. I'll, I'll nominate Councillor okay. Trevor Bellamy. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, Councillor Sheard's had her hand up. You're, you're on mute, Councillor Sheard. We can't hear you, I'm afraid. Come in, come here. Can you shut outside door? <laughs> Mm. Right, I'm just waiting for Councillor. Oh, here we are, Councillor Shid. Yeah. Sorry, um, yeah, I'll elect uh, Councillor Dave, Paul Davis. Okay, so you're nominating Councillor Davis. Thank you for that, um, Councillor Shid. So, um, so we need a seconder for um, Councillor uh, Roberts's nomination, um, which was for um, Councillor Bellamy. Okay, I think Councillor Brooke was first um, out of the blocks there. And um, the second one, Councillor Sheard nominated Councillor Davies. So Councillor Davies being the second one to come up. We, and that, sorry, that was seconded by Councillor Barker. Okay, so we'll uh, be the second one first, which is, can we elect Councillor Davies? Um, all those in favour of Councillor Davies being um, made the chair of the Climate Emergency Committee, please put your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13. Okay, um, all those against? One, two, three, four. Councillor Dalton, do you have a oh, five? Sorry. Yeah, against. Against, okay, six. And any abstentions? I'll abstain. the guts to bloody vote against it woman okay um so um so what sorry liz can you remind me what we've so what now we do you want to vote on whether you want um councillor bellamy yeah okay there. um so can we take uh we had to well, that, you to Bell that? bellamy willing to be vice chair no uh, we're still voting okay, for chair yeah. Council, councillor Dalton. So oh, okay. we have all those in favour of Councillor Trevor Bellamy um, being chair of the um, Climate Emergency Committee, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all those against? Okay, all those against that? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Any opposed? Ten. Any abstentions? Councillor Dalton? Well, the council's already democratically elected a chair to the position, so I'll abstain on this vote. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so on the basis of that, um, Councillor Davy becomes uh, chair of the Climate Emergency Committee. Okay, um, the final role, um, vice chair of the um, Climate Emergency Committee. We have um, well, Councillor Trevor Bellamy. Do you wish to um, be considered for vice chair of said committee? Okay. Okay. Well, someone does someone want to nominate Councillor Trevor Bellamy? Yes, I'll I'll, I'll nominate him. Okay, nominated by Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Brooke. All those in favour? This is for um, Councillor Trevor Bellamy to be it's, it's vice good. chair. Uh, I, I want Excuse to nominate. Me, Glenn Barker. Oh, apologies. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit late. Right. Let's. No, it's not too late. We haven't taken it count of the votes yet. Um, so you're quite right, Councillor Sheard. I should have offered the opportunity for any other nominations. Apologies. So, sorry. Was that a nomination from Councillor Sheard for Councillor Barker as vice chair? Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we have someone to second that? Yes, I'll second. Okay. okay. Councillor Davies has seconded that. So, um, so as the second one, we will start with that one. So all those in favour of Councillor Barker becoming Vice Chair of the Climate Emergency Committee. <laughs> Hands nice and high, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, it's eleven, I think. 
Uh, all those against Councillor Barker being elected Vice Chair of Climate Emergency? One, two, three, four. Yeah, Councillor Dalton, or oh, five. Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote on that? Yeah, against. Okay, um, so yeah. six. And then I think it was Councillor Roberts as well, so it's seven. I think that's got all of them, Liz. Okay, any abstentions? <coughs> Councillor Greaves. Yeah, Councillor Greaves, Councillor Dixon, myself. Okay, um, so sorry, Liz, how many in favour did we have again? 11. 11, okay, so we need to take our votes again. Okay, so um, all those in favour of Councillor Trevor Bellamy being Vice Chair of the Climate Emergency Committee, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have a vote, Councillor Dalton? Yeah, I'm in favour of that. Okay, thank you. So that's eight in favour. Okay, for completeness, all those against that. <coughs> against Councillor Trevor Bellamy being Vice Chair. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. seven, eight, nine, I think. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And um, any abstentions? Okay, we've got five abstentions. Okay, so um, that means Vice Chair of Climate Emergency Committee um, is Councillor Barker. Okay, right. Um, thank you for that, everybody. The final um, thing is to confirm, as a result, the committee membership um, so we've worked so on item 88 we've worked down all the different chairs and vice chairs with the exception of planning which was um delegated I, to the planning committee excuse me can i just ask what what numbers actually uh, voted for that last one which was the uh, climate emergency there were how many voted for um councillor barker how many voted for 11 four. 11 yeah yes seven against yes and three abstentions or oh, just three abstentions yeah. <laughs> and two and do you want the numbers for Trevor Bellamy people mute who aren't um, speaking and Trevor Bellamy had eight in favour nine against five abstentions that's everybody voting or not voting so that comes to 21 17 22 i make it all oh, right 22 so which one am to written down then here right council mm -hmm. roberts we, we can um the clerk will be able to show the um, numbers if necessary so moving on to the composition of the staffing committee, Liz, are you able to confirm who those people are from the information you have? Um, right. Well, we start with the chairman, which is um, Councillor Hogley, the vice chairman, which is Councillor Pogson. Um, then we have Pat Colling as chair of CASC. Um, now, Michael Pogson, Chair of Finance and Management. So, do we want to, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Someone in his place? Well, I'm the chairman. Councillor Brooke. The vice chairman of that committee to take his place. If the vice chairman of the council is on that committee already, like we did last year with yeah. Councillor Carey and yourself. Okay, so that would be um, Councillor Sweeney. I have uh, Councillor Blacker as Chair of Planning and uh, Councillor Carre as Chair of Pubs and Combs uh, Councillor Brook, Chair of Service Provision Councillor Davies as Chair of Climate Emergency 
So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, of course, there's the past chair on staffing, which would be Councillor Trevor Bellamy. So I'll make that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that right? Um, if, you, if you've covered all the all the chairs of the committees, then that would be that would be right. Yeah. Yeah. And ju just for completeness, so people are aware, on the staffing committee, there's also the um, staff development review coordinator. But again, in line with our um, standing orders, the um, that appointment is referred to the first meeting of the staffing committee. Can I just interject there, please, yeah. Chair? Um, there was discussion in staffing committee about keeping that position um, consistent with last year, which and um, uh, the the person who um, gave me supervision and management was Councillor Hall. So I don't, I'm, I would like to recommend, I don't know if I'm able to, but that was certainly one of the issues that the staffing committee wanted to flag up. Now she's not on that committee, so she can't really, can she be nominated if she's not on that committee to start with? Councillor Hall? Can I just say at this time that much as I've enjoyed my time doing it, I have done over the 12 months and I feel it's time to hand on to someone else. Thank you for your support, Liz. Okay, fair enough. Okay, okay. in which case, in light of what Councillor Hall's just said, I think it will be um, deferred to the first staffing committee to decide who's the staff development coordinator. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Okay, um, thank you everyone for getting through a somewhat lengthy item. Um, okay, so moving on to uh, item 89, um, to confirm representatives outside bodies. So we have a list of um, outside bodies. Um, Madam Chairman, could I make a comment? That yep. if, all, if all these parties that were members and representatives last year are still prepared to stand, uh, I think they only need to be at the changes, the bottom one, which is the past and present chairman uh, of the local council. I'd like to leave everything else as it was and move it in blocks and get on with some other business. Mm. Okay, does anyone want to second that? Yeah, Councillor Brooks seconded it. So are we all happy to stick to the same appointees for outside bodies? Yeah. Those in favour? Just wave. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so um, moving on to item uh, 90. Um, just to confirm the minutes of the council meeting heard on, uh, sorry, held on the um, 20th of July. Anyone want to propose those? Yeah, Councillor Brooke, thank you. Yeah. All those in favour? Everyone happy with those minutes? Yeah, that's carried. Okay, thank you. Um, right, item two is the minutes of the planning committee on the 3rd of August. Does anyone want to propose those? Okay, Councillor Tom Dixon, thank you. Right, all those in favour of those things, uh, planning uh, minutes? Okay, thank you. Carried. Okay, um, then the item three, the minutes of the planning committee from the 7th of September. So we have someone to nominate, uh, sorry, not nominate, um, uh, propose those. Yeah, Councillor Colling, thank uh, yeah. you. All those in favour of those? General show of hands, please. Yeah, thank you. Okay, final one. Um, the item four minutes of service provision held um, on the 7th of September as well. So, has someone's proposed those. Councillor Pogson, thank you. Always, everyone happy with those? Yeah, thank you. Okay, super. Um, right, so the next um, <coughs> item we have. Um, to review and approve all the policies currently adopted by the council, um, which are then listed under item 92. Is that right, Liz? Yeah. Okay, so there's a succession of um, five 
policies. So the first one is the annual leave policy. Oh, hang on a minute, sorry, uh, Chair. So item 91 is to approve the whole list of policies that currently stand and that have been brought in recently. So that needs to be a separate item. Apologies, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, um, so there's a there's a um, there's a table. Sorry, with all the the um, the different policies which we have to as part of the annual meeting each year, uh, we have to um, review them. Well, endorse them, ratify them. It's probably the right word. So, um, is everyone happy to approve these? <coughs> yeah. I've got a comment, if I may. Okay, Councillor Dalton. And it's a clarification, so uh, I, I'm just wondering if the council members understand what, what we're being asked to do here. Is This table um, includes documents that, fall, that we've got listed under item 92. No, so is it the... Sorry, item 92 is new policies that have been passed by the staffing committee, one, two, three and four. Um, and number five is a completely new one, but this list is all the policies that currently stand that are on the website or and have been recently changed in this year. So the equality and diversity policy is, where's that come from? Uh, that is a new policy for the council to... Oh, which council has put this forward to the council, can I ask? I've put it forward because um, YLCA have given me a list of 67 policies. Which I thought I've you worked for us, not the YLCA. Councillor Dalton, there's a recommended list of policies that all um, parish councils should have in place and this table collates what they all are, some of which we didn't have um, either in Forgive place me. in the first uh, instance I, or updated. Forgive me, I, I misunderstood. I thought the councillors directed policy at this council, not some mysterious outside parties forgive me i don't think i agree with councillor dalton i don't know how long this council has been a puppet of the ylca we have been able to do our own business in our own way in a proper and right manner and to be have to be dictated to by some bureaucrats i'm yeah. not with it Councillor Dixon and Councillor Dalton, um, we are a statutory body and as such we have to meet um, legal and governance requirements that are fitting of a parish council. These, policies are, the one, these policies are the ones Indeed, I Indeed, we could have discussed how to do that, Councillor uh, Chair. We could have discussed how to do that, Chair, rather than being told how it's going to be done by outside parties. Councillor Dalton, these lists are not, um, not new, new to us. We've seen lots of these um, policies before. Councillor Pogson. Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, I think it's only right that the clerk brings to our attention the recommendation for policies by the YLCA. However, this is the opportunity for any councillor who, who wishes to put forward that we do not adopt one of those particular policies. This is their opportunity to actually do that. So we're not being dictated by bureaucrats. The clerk has made us aware of the YLCA recommendations. This is our opportunity, whether we accept all those on mass, or if there's any particular policies that any particular councillor does not want to believe that this council should adopt, then this is their time when they can say so. Okay, so do, thank you for that, Councillor Pogson. Does anyone have any policy on that list, not um, not including the new ones we're looking at under 92, um, that they wish to make any proposal other than approving? Yes, I do. Okay, Councillor Dalton, which policies? Uh, it's the policy for um, diversity and equality, or is it equality and diversity, this, this uh, all-encompassing term? That's equality the next of, item. Uh, uh, Councillor Dalton, that's under the next item. Okay, that's un under item 92 on the agenda, so we can come to that when we move to that item. Well, I was answering your question, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine, but under item... 92 that's where we're looking at the ones which haven't been looked at by full council before item 91 is the ones that are already in existence and we're effectively ratifying them for the next year item uh, the equality and diversity policy is on the list in item eight in item 91 that was the point i was 
making in the first instance that you're voting to accept something that we haven't talked about even yet. Councillor Dalton, but if you look at the table certainly I'm looking at on page two where it features, um, it says it has a column HVPC approved. There is a, um, a dash at that um, that point because it's one that's being brought to full council on the 21st of September as indicated by the right hand column. That's how I read the read the table. So we can discuss it under item 92, but we need to um, address item 91 first. So Councillor Pogson. Just for clarification then, so can I just say that what we propose that we're um, adopting the table under, under item 91, we're, we're ratifying the table with the exception of those policies further detailed in section 92. Yeah. Okay, so is, can I see, can I see those in favour of that? Oh, sorry, Councillor Dixon, did you want to say something? Yeah, Come I was in. just going to propose that we accept a 91 to, to the policies there, the ones which are already there. Okay, all, right, all those in favour of that? Okay, anyone against? Yes, me. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Dalton against. Anyone abstaining? Yep, me. Okay, Councillor yep, me. And Councillor Paul Dixon. Okay, thank you. So moving on to item um, 92. So there's um, five policies which are, um, Liz, can you clarify, are these brand new or just um, majorly? Yes, they're, they're all brand new to the council, as I say. Um, annual leave, home working, sickness absence and whistleblower policy are all um, have been to the staffing committee who approved them in February and number five which is a new equality and diversity policy is totally new to the council and is a requirement by Kirk Lees if we are to take on the Homley Library which is why I brought it forward now because that transfer is likely to happen in the next few months. Okay so we'll work down them in turn so the annual leave policy. I propose we adopt this policy. Yeah I'd, I'd certainly second that. Okay all those in favour? <coughs> okay I can see lots of lots of hands in favour. Anyone against? Councillor Dalton, do you have a view on this one? Uh, no. Okay. Abstain. Okay, thank you. Anyone else abstaining? Yeah, me. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roberts. Okay, so, the, so we're adopting the annual leave policy. Home working policy um, for staff working entirely from home. Is there a need for this? Yeah, because the new climate emergency coordinator is a home working person. When was this person put in uh, put in office? I don't believe we've had a staffing committee meeting to appoint a new member of staff. The staffing committee meeting in February delegated three councillors to interview and appoint. And as I, don't, I can't remember that. They are they are now in in post, Councillor Dixon. So the home working policy. Um, I, I propose, can, yeah, I propose it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, all those in favour of home working policy? Okay, we'll see lots of hands. Anyone, um, anyone against? Anyone against home working policy, Councillor Dalton? Uh, abstain. Okay, thank you. Any other abstentions? Yes, I will abstain. Okay, Councillor Hall and Councillor Roberts. Okay, thank you. So, um, adopting about it. Okay, um, item three under this the sickness absence policy. Uh, would anyone like to propose that we adopt this? Yeah, Councillor Brooke, thank you. So what actually is the sickness policy, please? Sickness absence policy. Well, it's in a pack of papers, but I'm sure Liz can give us a, a sentence summary. Um, it determines how how you um, register your sickness absences and um, how they're dealt with and how much time you can have off and how much will be paid and how much won't be paid. 
according to the Green Book. Green Book, who wrote the Green Book? <laughs> Bureaucrats. Not. Right, moving on to um, taking a vote then on the sickness absence policy, which um, someone's proposed. All those in favour of it, please? It talks about return to work procedures and sick pay and things like that. Okay, I can see lots of hands. Yeah, the majority of hands. Right, anyone against? No, any abstentions? Yes, me. I don't. I don't know enough about that. Okay. All right. So that's um, adopted. The sickness absence policy. Um, okay. The next one, the whistleblower policy. Well, what exactly is a whistleblowing policy? Well, again, this is in the papers that are circulated with the um, with the meeting. Um, it's about people being able to speak speak out about um, concerns that they're aware of. Things may, like I may I speak on this issue? Um, if you can keep it brief, yeah. Councillor Dalton, be much. Briefer. I will try and keep it brief, just to um, inform Councillor Roberts. If mm -hmm. I know we've been inundated with paperwork, uh, the policy is basically stating that it's important that any fraud misconduct or wrongdoing by staff or others working on behalf of the council is reported um, properly and dealt with. Mm -hmm. It's quite, quite, quite an amusing read, Councillor Roberts, considering the activities over the past couple of years. Right, thank please you do, very much. Please do read it. Oh, well, yes. Very good. Mm. So it's only um, two sides long, Councillor Roberts, so. Oh, lovely. <laughs> light, light bedtime reading. Indeed. Indeed. Right, so um, do we have someone who will propose that we adopt the whistleblower policy, please? Mayor Councillor Brooke, thank you. Right, all those in favour? Okay, I can see lots of hands. Anyone against? Councillor Dalton, do you have a vote? Abstain. Okay, thank you. And I shall abstain. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roberts. Okay, right, um, on to uh, number five, um, which was the new equality and diversity policy. Is this a bit of bedtime reading as well? Oh, this is great bedtime reading. Is it? Oh, God. Be focused on what we're trying to do, conscious that um, it is already quarter to nine and we still have quite a lot of an agenda to work through. So, the equality and diversity policy, which, um, as our clerk has outlined, is um, a requirement from Kirtley's Council that we have one, um, uh, which uh, I know from experience in other community groups, they always um, expect to see one of those um, policies. And what does that, what does that promote or demote? Well, that's also in the papers, um, and it's about our um, commitments to equal opportunities and employment, um, training, grievances, all that sort of thing. Right. It's a slightly long, longer piece of reading, I'm afraid, um, Councillor Roberts. Right. Well, the work please, Council dictating to us now. Yeah. We, might, we, might, we might as well not bother if we dictated to by then. Uh, Councillor Dixon, just to clarify, a lot of these things are legal requirements that meet our um, requirements of non-discrimination of employees and other people. Oh, God, I don't to be careful of anything to do with Care Police Council and just keep my ears and eyes open. Councillor Davies? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to propose that we accept this, but just, just a quick comment. I do find it quite disturbing that on a subject such as this, the people are so dismissive of, of actually putting something in place which helps us uh, eradicate any form of, of discrimination uh, against uh, employees. So I do find it quite, um, yeah, quite disturbing, but I propose that we, uh, that we accept this as a council and take it forward. Thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Dixon, just before we take a vote on it. Well, uh, Councillor Hogley, I'd requested Wait, to this. Yeah, Councillor Dalton, you can speak in a moment. Councillor Dixon, just turn his hand up, so I'm just... Yeah, I'm just agreeing with what uh, Councillor Davies said, and, and and a lot of these rules and things like that, they, they, they probably haven't come from Kirklees, they probably come from the government advising us to, to do these kind of things and have a policy in place, and it's it's good practice, and I'm a bit disappointed like uh, with Paul Davies that councillors are taking this as a triviality and not not taking this seriously. Okay, thank you Councillor Davies. Certainly Dixon. not uh, taking this so trivially. Keep it brief again, that would be much appreciated. 
Yeah, I'm not going to uh, go through this garbage in detail, but I will highlight one uh, uh, part of the policy, which is placing, um, uh, well, placing some kind of obligation on the council and councillors in the future. And quite frankly, this is a disgusting document. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King would be spinning in his grave. I'm quote, going to quote from the monitoring and review section of this document where it states in particular the council will monitor the ethnic and gender composition of the existing workforce and of applicants for jobs including promotion i mean forget judging people by the content of the character and not by the color of the skin it, it's just disgusting Absolutely. forcing councillors to be racist to, to, to monitor their ethnic uh, and gender composition I, I, I do. I, I'm going to leave my comments there, but I do have an amendment to the policy to put to the council, and it reads as follows: the amendment is to after equality and diversity policy, remove everything and replace with the following two sentences. Employees will be appointed and assessed solely on criteria relating to their ability to do the job required of them by the taxpayers who they serve. No other criteria should be considered. End of policy. Okay, so Councillor Dalton, that's effectively a counter proposal to Councillor Davies adopting the whole um, policy as it sits. So, does anyone wish to second Councillor Dalton's proposal that the. I'm um, quite happy to second that. I think it's very good, a very good policy and very right. <laughs> okay, right. We'll take a vote on that um, amendment then. So, all those in favour of Councillor Dalton's amendment to reduce the equality and diversity um, policy to the two sentences he gave. Right, I can see, um, well, I assume Councillor Dalton is voting in favour of that. I um, will be, yes. Yeah, okay. And we've got Council Councillor Bellamy, sorry, are you, are you voting, Councillor Bellamy? Yeah. Okay, and Councillor Dixon and Councillor Roberts. Okay, uh, all those against that? Against the amendment? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Any abstentions? Okay, I can see two abstentions. Okay, so that's um, defeated, Councillor Dalton. So um, we'll defeated take... and recorded. Thank you very much. So, Councillor um, Davies proposed that we adopt the equality and diversity policy as um, circulated with the paperwork. Um, we have a seconder for that, please. Yeah, Councillor Blacker, thank you. All those in favour? Your hands up, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, I think. Um, okay, all those against? I assume Councillor Dalton, are you against on this vote? I vote shame on you for voting for this. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, right, one, two, three, four. Okay, four against. Any abstentions? Yeah, I can see one abstention. Two abstentions. Okay, so um, the equality and diversity policy is um, hereby adopted by the council. Right, um, so moving swiftly on to item 93, referral from the Service Provision Committee. This is to approve the new policy for memorial benches as recommended by the Service Provision Committee. Again, this was circulated with papers, um, but I don't know whether Councillor Pogson has anything he wishes to draw attention to. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking myself. Um, I just like to say that this has come before the council on a number of occasions uh, in the past and um, um, we were always advised by our previous clerk that um, that we shouldn't sort of um, go down this route. But I think um, most of the, and that was a bit contrary to what most of the councils actually thought. I think so. I think we've got a healthy, um, quite thought out policy, and I think there's a little more common sense and around memorial benches. And I think this is a way forward. 
and I think it's better. So I would uh, propose that we um, propose this um, policy is adopted and we go forward with it. Can I just Trevor Bellamy's first, then I'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I just want to go back a few weeks. Uh, one of our uh, parishioners contacted me in relation to re requiring a seat for her demise brother, seat with yeah. a plaque on. Uh, right. I spoke to our clerk at the <laughs> time and, and we were, uh, it was noted that uh, the committee, the uh, service provision committee, we're looking at a, a background, if you like, a new proposal. Um, the lady is aware that some changes may well be made, but she was she was seeking advice rather than anything else. She was willing to provide a seat if need be. Certainly, with the plaque, she will follow the guidelines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, it is a it's a small number of weeks since she made contact with us, but I just wondered if before we approve this new policy, which uh, effectively we just said no to her, um, I would, I would be, I would like perhaps to just consider it prior to uh, prior to making any approvals. Thank you. <coughs> Um, okay, Councillor Roberts? Yeah, I think actually it's the same lady that contacted me with regards to this as well. And I put her, I put her forward to speak to Councillor Trevor Bellaby, being the chairman of the council at that particular time. And I also spoke, I think, to Tom Dixon and he said that, uh, that he himself, he knew what I was going to be ringing him about, he said, and uh, that he himself and Councillor Mary Blacker had it all in hand. So I'm presuming that's what happened. <clears throat> yes, no? And I presume that it was going ahead this because uh, it was a memorial seat for, because I did say to her that if there was a major problem, maybe we could put it into the grounds of the Home Valley Memorial Hospital. Okay, can I just ask, there's, there's obviously a specific issue about a specific bench with a specific member of the public who's... That's correct, yeah. Um, now, I don't know what promises have been made to that person and whether they run counter to this um, policy, but um, the item here really is to um, approve this policy going forward. So if someone's been given advice that was in line with our recent policy, then obviously the councillors involved in that conversation need to review whether they uh, wish to go back to that, that person to continue yes. discussions. Um, Councillor Tom Dixon, do you, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think this is a different one to what um, Judith uh, spoke to me about the one I was spoken to spoken about was to do with uh, a bench at Cliffwreck, and um, and Mary had also had some correspondence with uh, the resident about it as well. And, okay, good. Um, I, 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 and yeah. um, I think they wanted to put a bench on the wreck, but I don't know. What, I'm not sure what quite happened, but it, it, it hasn't ended up going through. I don't think. Okay, well let's 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 move okay. back to just the principle of the policy. We've got a one-page policy which summarises it. Um, this this one-page policy, Madam Chairman, is it going against everything that this council has ever done? People like me that can't walk enjoy having seats placed at strategic positions. They're there for a reason. They're there to honour somebody in 99% of cases. Are we going to stop this? just by some sheer bureaucracy. I don't know what the policy is. I haven't read the policy document. Well, a Councillor Dixon... I, 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 I just think it's a storming a teacup and why can't we carry on doing what we've always done? Well, Councillor Pogson has outlined the fact that it's something which um, has been discussed and proposed at um, service provision. And I'm afraid if you don't uh, look at the policies in advance, it's um, difficult to then uh, comment on them. It's not getting rid of benches. It is all about putting plaques on benches. So, um, yeah, well, we'll Councillor Brook, can you just, um, if you can make it short and then we'll move to a vote to adopt this policy. Yeah, just to explain to some councillors what we realise, the problem at the moment is if you have a parish council bench there, we can't let anybody else put a plaque on. We ask them to replace it. This is to cut that out so they can put a plaque on a council bench which is already situated. It's to save time and money. 
and a lot of hassle. That's all we're doing. So it's going to be better for the uh, taxpayers that they don't have to find a lot more money to put a memorial, you know, a little plaque on the bench. Super. Thank you, Councillor Brooke. That was, that was helpful. So can, can I... I ask a question, please? Uh, um, okay, Councillor Dalton. Yeah, there's a policy, obviously, that involves a monetary um, value that's being requested off any individual who um, the council agrees can take part in this, shall we call it, a scheme. Um, and it's £50 per year. So if I'm reading this correctly, the council, if it um, is, <laughs> is going to give approval to somebody to put a plaque on a bench, is going to be asking them to contribute £50 per year for the upkeep of the bench, if that's the po am I understanding the policy correctly? No, uh, no. There? The, it's, they may make a contribution if they want to. It's not a compulsory thing. It's not a payment in return for the plaque. So Council we're just <laughs> suggesting a, a contribution is made yes. annually, uh, and no, not annually. Least... Once off, I think. Once off. No, it says fifty pounds per year. Oh, yeah. um, I'll just let Councillor Pogson respond to those. Oh, yes, it does. The original proposal. Um, just, just to explain, and as it says it, the resident may make a contribution to the upkeep of the bench, and then we propose it was suggested to um, the people who want to put the um, plaque on the bench that um, our benches cost approximately fifty pound per year to maintain the bench. Right, thank you. If you thank make you. a contribution, it goes towards the chairman's charity. And that's the end of the conversation. What they choose to contribute is their choice. But we would only let one, one plaque on one bench and it has to be affixed by, it has to fit certain dimensions, it has to be affixed by the council's own contractor, but the person who <laughs> provided the, the plaque, they provide it. Okay. Are, we, are we clear how long that's, that's for? Because obviously there may be a, I'm just looking forward a few years. You don't want to get into a, a competitive situation where uh, I, 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 is, is this ad infinitum for the rest of time, 200 years, the same plaque is, is on irrespective of contribution or... Um... I believe that once they're, once they're on the bench, they're on the bench. Uh, if that bench is um, removed at some point or the parish council decides to, has to actually replace the bench, <laughs> Um, I suppose we would have to discuss whether that plaque goes back on or not. I, I think there's a potential, um, how can we say, problem with a, maybe a, an old granny who comes along and all of a sudden her husband's bench that's been named for... I'm just trying to anticipate and cut out any potential um, sadness, shall we say, in future years. I think you've raised a very good point there, uh, Councillor Dalton. Um, would you... Um, Consider making a proposal to that to amend the to amend the policy in such a way. Well, I, I think it, as long as you're up front with people who are ap applying, that they, they understand that it's not uh, ad, that it, it doesn't go on, and um, that it, it, it isn't indefinite. That many there are many people in the community that that may wish to take advantage of this. I, mean, I, I just see there's going to be a potential problem. I mean, off the cuff. I mean, I can think about it and come back to you at a, a uh, future time. Liz, could you confirm when the next service provision meeting is, please? In January. Can, can you write? Can you write to me, Michael, privately, and uh, and maybe I'll give you my thoughts. Um, yeah, on on the basis of what Councillor Dalton's put forward, I'm suggesting that we um, suspend voting on this until the next service provision committee can have a look at it and come back with some suggestions from yeah. Councillor Dalton. I will, I will um, get in touch with Councillor Dalton, but Councillor Jason Brook will be the next chair of service provision. So I think if we... Oh, sorry. Apologies, Councillor Brook. So, um, so okay. would, that be, would that proposal be okay? Yeah. Can we take a vote on that? So we defer it to the next service provision to come back to full council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, raising that. Okay. So um, the next one is item 94. This is just a note. It's um, the progress of the external audit and it's the end of the public consultation period. Um, no member of the public asked to review the parish council's accounts um, and uh, the external audit is due to be completed in the next um, few weeks and will be published between the end of this month and the end of November. Um, 
Rich, tell me if there's anything you want to say under that item or we'll move on. No, that's that's quite thorough. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so point, moving point on. Point of order, Miss Miss uh, Chair. Yes, Councillor Dalton. <laughs> the meeting's now exceeded two hours in length. The uh, the um, agenda was very, very optimistic to begin with, but we've exceeded the statutory period of the meeting and really with the number of items that are outstanding, I propose that the meeting is adjourned and the remainder of the uh, agenda is covered at an extraordinary general meeting to be arranged by yourself and the Vice Chair as you see fit. Can I make a counter proposal that we uh, extend the meeting by half an hour to co cover what is necessary to be done tonight so we don't have to come back to another meeting? So it won't get done in half an hour. So have we got a seconder for um, Councillor Brooks? Yes. Yes. We were, de we were delayed because of the communication problem with Councillor. Okay, Dalton, well, let's. Um, so can we move to vote to extend the meeting by half an hour? All those in favour? Okay. Anyone against? Yes. Councillor Dalton, yeah. Councillor Firth? I think we should stick with the standing orders as they're written. No, oh, sorry, and Councillor Bellamy. Trevor Bellamy. Um, any abstentions? No? Okay. Right. Um, so we will motor through um, as quickly as we as as we can. Um, can you, Liz, can you say if there's anything that can be readily deferred, please? Um, I can, uh, well, as we get there, I, there are some that I have in mind that could be deferred. Right. Um, to approve the schedule of payments for July and August and September. Um, Rich, do you need to say anything on those? I think, these have been, I think most of these have been agreed already because they, they are part of our uh, regular list of payments. It was the other list really which is uh, ones that are more unusual. So these these tend to be just ones that are kind of quite normal. It's, it's the next one that's, that needs looking at really. Okay, um, so do we, um, are we all in favour of approving those schedules of payments? All those in favour? Yeah, I can see lots of hands. Good, thank you. Um, I noticed it says the council's asked to nominate two signatories to come to the office to sign the invoices this week. It says, Rich, is that still required? If that would that would be very helpful if somebody could, or, or if if that can't happen, I will go out to people's houses. Well, I, I'm happy to come pop into the office. Whatever's convenient. Um, don't, don't forget your office to come. We can, from from Wednesday we can't meet each other. It's um, we're in lockdown. Yeah. Um, that's true, but for working purposes, um, we should be able to um, review those invoices because yeah. it's to allow the, the work to continue. So that it would all be socially distanced and um, obviously not in people's homes or gardens. So you're quite right, Councillor Colling, to raise that. Work colleagues aren't treated the same as uh, private people. It's private people to be persecuted. Okay, so I think um, so. Myself and uh, Councillor Pogson have both indicated that they could um, come in and sign, and Councillor Dixon as a reserve. That's okay, Tom Dixon. Against the regulations. Not for uh, work, I don't think it is for work. You're still allowed to go to work as long as you're socially distanced. Which can be done in the council um, chamber because that's how it's yeah. been, been done over recent weeks for signatures. That's right. Okay, moving on to item 96 um, to approve the purchase of an iPad for use by the new climate emergency coordinator. Um, this is um, something to uh, enable the coordinator, who obviously we met, met earlier in the meeting, um, to um do her do her role effectively but the ipad remains the property of the council um not her personal property so um councillor davies do you as um chair of or previous chair and current chair of the climate emergency coordinator do you want to propose this or say anything yep, else? I, I was going to propose it yeah absolutely as you say this is this is really some you know technology that uh, michelle uh, needs and it's in line with what we've discussed earlier in terms of the um, working from home uh, policies. So yeah, absolutely like to propose this, please. Okay, anyone can second that, please? Yeah, I'd like to speak oh, against, thank you. Uh, uh, or at least get a clar clarification. Um, 
eight hundred and whatever it is pounds for a, for an iPad. Um, the uh, Home Valley Parish Council has quite an itinerary of, of uh, equipment, and this is another piece of equip piece of spending for a professional marketeer and PR. She's got plenty of kit. Um, why there's any necess necessity to supply her with a piece of hardware? Not too, not too sure. But uh, is this an, an item that's going to be paid for from the forty-seven thousand pounds, which has been uh, shuffled into the climate emergency budget, or is this from um, other uh, other budgets? Um, Councillor Davies or, or the clerk, yeah. can you comment on the budget? There's absolutely no issue with it being funded from the, the climate emergency um, budget uh, whatsoever. I'm not sure about money being shuffled. I, I haven't seen that yet, but uh, if, there's, if there's some shuffling going on, Rich, could you let me know? Um, yes, yes, it is, uh, absolutely. It, would be, it was covered, the initial, uh, initial budget we put together for recruitment included um, an allowance for hardware. So yes. Uh, Councillor Brooke, do you have a quick comment? No, I was just wondering, what, it says the cost is 8 49 60 over two years. Why two years? What's, sorry, I just don't understand that bit. If you can just explain that to me, please. Because we, um, we've got one on um, a, t a two year contract because we don't have a facility for paying money up front over the internet. We, we've asked for it on a two year <laughs> so it's slightly more expensive and it also includes the um, Office 365 and it also includes the O2 connection so that she can use it when she's out and about and she can use yeah. Facebook on it. So it's not just the iPad, that includes two other um, facilities as well. Yeah, so it's the tool to allow her to do the, do the job for the um, year that she's appointed, but yeah. the economic way of doing it was the two-year contract, that's my understanding. Yeah. Trevor Bellamy? I was, uh, I was just going to make the point, I've spotted the, uh, the two-year contract for the, for the machine, but yet the, uh, the young lady who's going to be using it is on a 12-month contract. Yeah, um, yeah. You know that uh, it was just something I spotted there, which uh, I presume had been spoken about. Councillor Pogson, can we just confirm that this piece of equipment remains uh, property of the parish council and it's only to be used for parish council business? And that if there was any problem or anything like that, termination of problem, you know, we would just take the take the equipment back. There won't be any issue of us of the uh, employee having parish council business on their own personal or own equipment that they use for another business and therefore yeah, that, we have sort of like control of it and we can take it back if that if that's necessary uh, yep, yeah, yes. the well, property of the parish council. Yeah. yeah and i and i think yeah councillor Parkson raised a very important point you know one what, another reason for this is exactly as councillor Parkson said the council business uh, is not on uh, individuals' private um, PCs, etc. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Can I just ask, seeing as we're duplicating the climate emergency, whatever they're doing in Kirklees, couldn't Kirklees have given us some equipment for her to work at home with? Councillor Hall, the appointment is by the Parish Council, our Climate Change Coordinator works for the Parish Council and is paid by the Parish Council, so her equipment would have to be provided by the Parish Council. Can we move to a vote please for the, um, yes, the, the iPad? About, if you're going to answer the question, Chair, you want to answer it properly. Kirklees was given a lot of money for this climate change. We're the only parish council that's not involved with Kirklees. Debbie Dale, Kirk Burton and Murfield are. And if every one of those parish councils in Peak District were all different, it would cost an arm and a leg because there's 139 parish councils in the Dowager Peak District. So just remember that. And when somebody asks you a question, don't start shooting it on one side. I've been on this job a little bit longer than you, love. Right, Councillor Firth, I'd appreciate if I was spoken to with slightly more respect than calling me love. Now, can we um, bring us back onto the item, which is the purchase of the iPad, which is using some of the Climate uh, Emergency Committee budget to support the member of staff that has been appointed to do the role 
that the uh, parish council identified as needed. So can we, we vote for those to, in favour, please? Sorry, we but we didn't have to do it. Could have been done through Kirklees. The government <laughs> gave Kirklees eleven million pounds for this job. Councillor, so, and you decided, I don't know whether you decided or not, but somebody did. It's a case of let's get the money spent. That's what it's all about. Councillor Firth, can you please? Um, I'm just telling you, if you can't... We, as a full council, we chose our budget. Within our budget, we had an identified budget for climate emergency. Now, this item is about the purchase of the iPad. So can we move to a vote? All those in favour? Can I clarify the wording of the motion, please? Right, can I clarify? Councillor Davies, can you confirm the wording of the motion we're voting on, please? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, to, it's to approve the purchase of an iPad for the use by the new Climate Emergency Coordinator, Michelle Brown, and the cost is £849, 60 pence over two years. And as, um, as uh, our clerk has said, that includes Office 360 and uh, a network connection as well, so that she can work uh, on a mobile basis. So that's, Thank uh, you. that's it. Thank you, Councillor Davies. I'm seconded by Councillor Barker. Can we move to a vote, please? Can I just ask a question? Councillor, it says over two years. Do we have to do it over two years? Are we agreeing in one year? Because it does say over two years. Do we need to do it over two budgets or just one budget? I think we need you to can buy one, one for 329 quid. The motion is over the two years for the purchase of the equipment. You can buy one for 329 quid. Then we're moving I mean, to on this. Um, proposal, please. All those in favour of the purchase of the iPad, as outlined by Councillor Davies, please raise your hands. Okay, we've got one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, I think it was thirteen. All those against? Okay, anyone against? No, I was up to Okay, Councillor Hall, Councillor Paul Dixon, um, Councillor Dalton, are you against I'm, abstaining? I'm, ag I'm against the cost for co value for money. Okay. Mm. So I'm against, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Any abstentions? Sorry, Liz, I, did, I didn't vote, but I, I, I should have voted. Um, I'm for. Um, okay, so... Chair, uh, Chair, can I make a comment before we move on, please? Okay, Councillor Dalton. Uh, no, it's Councillor Sweeney. Sorry. Your apologies, sorry. That's <laughs> all right. That's right. Okay. Uh, I, it's, it's great that councillors are passionate about the issues that we're discussing, but I want to object formally to the language used by Councillor Firth in talking to the clerk, please. There is no place for that kind of tone in democracy. And I think he should retract the term that he used and should not use it again in this forum. Okay. Sorry, what, was it, what was the term? He called it council love. Oh, oh, okay. It was calling the chair, lo chair love, but anyway. Sorry, uh, I, I do apologise. <laughs> oh, that's where I got confused. Sorry. Yeah. That kind of talk is completely inappropriate. Okay. It's a disgusting um, word. Right, unless unless Councillor Firth uh, wishes to make any comment, uh, we will move on. I might have muted him, actually. Uh, Councillor Firth, did you want to make a comment on that? Or not? Well, I'm just saying, uh, you know, I, it's not, nothing's been done done against anybody. I don't, I don't, I, if I've upset somebody, fine, but I don't, I didn't think I had done it. Councillor Firth, that's saying if I've upset somebody is the least sincere form of apology I've ever heard. If you could apologise for the term and move on, that would be great. Chair of the council, I'm not talking to you. Okay. Right. Okay. We will. We will move on. Thank you. Right. So, um, to let's uh, get through the key things we need. To, we need to cover in this. So. Um, item 97 is to approve the payment of, um, this is the salary, national insurance tax and pensions by monthly standing order for the new climate emergency coordinator, um, as is done by the... I'm going to make a comment on this. I understood we were getting a person uh, on a temporary basis 
I believe that this lady has other business assets and other business attributes. I would have thought common sense would have prevailed and they would have been taken on without any payments for NHI tax or pensions as they are self-employed and they would be, should be treated as self-employed and we shouldn't have to pay these extra amounts of money. It was never ever stated, it was always said we wanted somebody on a temporary basis to share with some other parts of the Home Valley in doing this work and ideally the person should be somebody that is like this lady who is self-employed who can then just bill us once a month for her time which is agreed figures and we don't pay all these extra pieces. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, Councillor Dixon, um, Liz, is there anything that you need to say from the um, monetary side or Rich indeed? Oh, well, it's much easier for Rich if, if it's paid by standing order because he doesn't have to do the calculations every month. It's the same as we're now paid by standing order. It saves him a lot of time. And uh, she is treated, she has to be treated like a member of staff, just like um, Rich and myself. She has the same. Right. That's the right. rule. That's the law. Yeah. We're, we're getting a self employed person, somebody that was going to be working uh, with some other businesses and other things. We weren't setting on a person. We weren't employing an individual person. It, that well, was never the brief. No, it's, it's all in the council. Okay, can we, so, so really the issue here is about the payment by standing order rather than any other means, isn't it? I'm not against the payment by standing order, but it could be the same amount every month and that be for the time that she spent as a self-employed person, not as a paid member of the council. Okay, Councillor Davies? If you can... Yeah, j just very quickly, um, the, the role was approved, um, you know, and uh, by the council as an, as an employee, uh, we advertised it as an employee and we, and we recruited on the basis of it being an employee. Um, yeah, Councillor Dixon's right, if, if we'd wanted to, but we didn't, uh, we could have, um, you know, put that out as looking for services to be provided as, as has happened in the council in the past. Um, but I think um, certainly, uh, you know, the view was very strongly that we would be looking for a temporary employee um, and, uh, and that's the basis. So from my perspective, we should go ahead uh, and approve um, uh, this as laid out in the... Uh, okay, can I ask for all those in favour of um, approving the payment by standing order? I'd like to comment on this item, please. Well, please make it quick, Councillor Dalton, because we're just in the process. I will. I'd just like to echo um, uh, Councillor Dixon's sensible comments, um, and just. Uh, but I would like to remind him um, that whilst there's a, a simple way of going about things, you can always get somebody to come out in with a more complex way of doing it. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Right. So um, let's move to all those in favour of um, of the motion to approve the payment salary, etc. A standing order. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, by standing order, they can pay, yeah, but not, not as a self employed. Not as a self employed right. person. Well, it's under right, the contract please. of employment that we have, right? All those against, please? For the contract and ask. Are you against, Councillor Paul Dixon? I'm not against paying by standing order. I'm against no. the principle of what they've set this person on at. Okay, well, I think it's costing this, this council and the ratepayers. Uh, a lot of more money than it needed to do. Right, so are you wishing to abstain or to vote against, Councillor Dixon? I'm wishing to vote in favour of paying the salary, not the NHI tax or pensions. Well, the, the um, proposal stands in full for the full agenda item. So, um, do you wish to vote against or abstain? I'll, on that? I'll, have, to vote. I'll have to abstain. Okay. Yes, I'll, I'll abstain. Okay, and Councillor Roberts abstaining. Okay, um, Councillor Dalton? Uh, I'll, I'll vote against. Okay, thank you. Right, that motion's carried then. Okay, um, the architect's fee, uh, item 98. Um, Liz, could this be deferred to a future meeting or does it need uh, to be done? Well, we, we can uh, leave it because actually they're going to take that money from the £10,000 that we've already okay. transferred. So that's, 
Okay, super. Right, so we've, um, so that item no longer no longer applies. Okay, moving on to ninety nine. Quote for the purchase of past chairman jewels. Um, I would suggest, to be honest, assuming Councillor Trevor mm -hmm. Bellamy is um, content with this, that we defer this to um, the next meeting. Um, I must confess, I think uh, I would welcome a wider discussion on whether chairman's jewels are what people would wish to have or whether they wish to have a different type of um, recognition which may be more cost effective or more desirable from the point of view of past chairs. Um, Councillor Colling, quick comment? I'll be very quick. I, I endorse your opinion. I think if, if Councillor Bellamy wants to have what we currently have, I think we should give it to him. I think we should look at what we give and we should consider getting it from a jeweller in the valley and we have one in Honley rather than buying from some anonymous, you know, supplier. Okay. Can I can I suggest we um, defer yeah. this to the next full council? Um, I'll second and, that. Councillor agrees. Um, Councillor Trevor Bellamy could indicate in advance if, if um, he is interested in uh, securing a, a jewel similar to what we had before, uh, and perhaps other councillors can think about whether there are other uh, things. Uh, that, that may be used instead of instead of the jewel. That's just throwing it out there. So we'll defer that to the next meeting. Um, okay, the next one is about the um, an overpayment to the it's item 100 to consider an overpayment to the Civic Hall Community Trust and their staffing grant. Um, Liz, want to... Well, it's just a simple decision. Do you want to leave that money with the Civic Hall Trust or do you want to recoup the £1,569.78 that was an overpayment? Uh, Councillor Greaves, I propose we recoup the money. I second that proposal. Okay, all those in favour? Uh, I'm, I'm in favour, obviously. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dalton. Anyone against? Okay, that's carried. Okay, thank you. Okay, to um, item 101, um, to appoint authorised signatories under the bank mandate. So as you'll see in your papers, we've got um, current signatories with some of the chairs from... Um, 2019 to 2020. Um, I'm thinking that the um, uh, clerk will need to review who the chairs now are of those committees and see who would then require um, paperwork to progress their signatures. Would that be right? I don't know if Rich or Liz is. Yeah, no, I should I'd like to come off, please, because I uh, am not a chair of anything. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's not appropriate that I sign checks. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roberts. Can I just say the only two on there who would um, continue would be Councillor Hogley and Councillor Pogson, who will be continuing chairs. So you just we need to decide who is going to be a signatory, and then we can organise it. But you need to make a decision about how many signatories you're going to have for each account. Um, I'm assuming it would normally be useful to have. At least four signatories given yeah. each thing yeah. that do. Madam Chairman, yeah. uh, from Richard's perspective, uh, I'm quite happy to leave my name on until the new people have been uh, uh, accepted. I don't want to stop on, but I will keep my name and be prepared to sign checks for Richard's benefit uh, until the new uh, chairman have been uh, ratified. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tom Dixon? Yeah, I, I agree with, count with, uh, with, um, with that. Yeah, it, it, this would be, um, it would be easy for us to stay on for the time being, but it should be the chairman of the committees who do yeah. it. So it would be Pat, Mary, Rachel, uh, Michael, Jason, etc. Yeah. Okay, um, so I think that would, that would be fine for HSBC. Um, Handles Bank, and I'm conscious we've got um, <coughs> Councillor Kath Bellamy and the clerk as the signatories. <coughs> um, so, how many signatories do we need? Do we want four? Presumably, we want the same for everybody, don't we? Or not? I think four would be plenty for Handles. I mean, we don't use that one in quite so much as, as HSP. <coughs> I mean, I, I would suggest that the chair and vice chair of the council and the chair of finance and planning would be the the three who ought to be on on all of the all of those bank accounts chair vice chair and what chair and, and then the chair of finance and planning oh, sorry uh, yeah 
it is called finance and money. Okay. Right. Finance and management, sorry, not finance and planning. Yeah. All right, that's three then. That's three. And the clerk. And the clerk. Can I suggest we have the deputy clerk on there as well? Okay. Um, so should we have as a as a rule of thumb all the um, accounts have have those um, three councillors and the clerk and the deputy clerk? Madam Chairman, yeah. how many how many people have to sign these accounts? Three. Oh. On, on the individual ones, how many signatures do we need? Three. Three. We prepared to give you live secrets away. <laughs> Can I make a comment? I think it's inappropriate to put the uh, any future current or future employees who are who may be cl clerks and financial officers in a position where they can be a majority signature on a. On, on, a, on a payment by, by the council. I think that's not a, a, a that, if that's a route that we're going to go down, that would be something we really ought to think about seriously. Okay, yeah. That's Can I just say that the, the it's always preferred that two councillors sign it, the clerk or deputy clerk is a, a third. That's the way it's preferred. Okay, Councillor Brooke and then Councillor Pogson, please. Yeah, I'll be happy to go on the list, Councillor Chair, Okay, thank you. That's great, Councillor Brooke. Um, Councillor Yeah, I would just like to echo Councillor Dalton's uh, comments. And I think, um, whilst I think that Richard, uh, you know, and being the financial officer and the clerk should both be signatories, I don't think we should um, ever go in a position where the two employees are two of the three signatories on any any particular item. Only one of them should be a set, you know, it should always be two councillors and one of the yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. But I'm saying that that should be, rather than preferable, that should be as it always, oh, you know. We, it is the rule. It is the rule. That, okay, that's fine. So it's not preferable, it's the rule. It's the rule. And Thank you. Can I suggest that, that the deputy clerk is the signatory on, on Handel's Bank and I'll stay the sign, or one of us does one of them and the other one does the other one. You have to have one of us yeah. on there because otherwise the bank won't talk to you about anything. No, you're okay. great. So, so with the CCLA account, I see it says signatories question mark. Do we not have anyone as signatories on that one at the minute? No, we need them definitely need them updated and there aren't any that I know of. Okay, so so on the basis of people who put their hands up before, should we have the um chair of the council, the vice chair of the council, the chair of um finance and management and the chair of service provision, which Councillor Brooke putting himself forward for that. Isn't um, can I can I just say isn't Councillor Pogson already two of those people? Isn't isn't Councillor Pogson chair of finance? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good point. And okay. vice chairs. So you need someone else. Okay. Well, we have Councillor Brooke. You can go to the vice chairman of that committee, which will be Councillor Joel Sweeney, to take over um, certain roles of the chairman. If the chairman can do that, so Councillor Joel Sweeney will be asked to do, take that role up as a signatory on behalf of finance. Are you happy with that, Councillor Sweeney? Yep, that's uh, fine. I, w I would suggest that rather than we go down the route of vice chairman, a uh, chairman of another committee, uh, we've got other committees. We've got the planning committee with Mary. We've got other people that are on the, the uh, chairman. And I think it, it should only be chairman rather than vice going down the route of vice chairman because I think that's undermining, I'm no, no offence to Joe, but I think it's undermining the system that we've been working. Yeah, I agree. No offence, no, that's a good idea. So can I suggest then that we have uh, Councillor Hogley, Councillor Pogson, Councillor Brook, and Councillor Blacker, and either one of the RFO or the clerk on each account. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Trevor Bell is still on the signatory as the uh, chairman and chairman of the staffing committee. He's also already a chair yeah. signatory already. Yeah. Okay, so have you got all the people you need, Liz, for the... Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, right, the next, um, conscious that we've got, I think, two minutes for our extra um, half hour to run out. Um, completion of the following leases, this is just to note the, um, this item... Noted. 102. Noted. Uh, noted. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, poppy wreaths, 
Um, the council's asked to approve the purchase of eight poppy wreaths at a cost of £136. I'll propose that councillor comments to make on this, um, on this item. And uh, we're going to run out of time. As well, you're aware. I'll, I'll propose that we extend for another 10 minutes then, no, councillor Greaves. No. Extend, 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 extend. What's the point of having a standing order? That What's the tells point of talking about everything else? Get this done, there will be no poppy reeves for the memorials. I think it's very important that we either take a vote on it and go with poppy reeves, or we, by default, we won't be on poppy reeves. Can we move? Can we move? This item just doesn't just include poppy reeves, Mike, Michael. It in, in, in includes lists of representatives for the council, which have been presented to everybody. And I've got I've got I've got um, uh, matters that I, I wish to put to the council about this. And I propose and, that and we divest the motion and go to we'll approve the purchase of the poppy reeves and defer the deciding who lays the poppy reeves to a later date. Can I insist that this isn't slit that this doesn't just go under the radar, Michael, and this doesn't get missed off the next agenda because this is important. This is our community, and it's I've got things to say. Well, I agree that it's important, but I think it's very important that we get on with perching the poppy reefs and then decide who lays them at a later date. Jet, not purchasing poppy reefs and nobody gets one. All this time is, is, is being taken away from just finishing off the agenda. I propose a further 10 minutes and can we just speak to the agenda items and only to the agenda items? Okay, so, um, right, so we've got the, well, we can, the agenda item is to approve the purchase of the eight poppy Point of order, is Chair, that, we're out of time. This meeting has run out of time. Well, will anyone second Councillor Greaves' request to extend the meeting by 10 minutes? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, all those in favour of that? We get these issues resolved yet, that's part of the carried, Councillor Dalton. Right, so moving on to, Council is asked to approve the purchase of eight poppy reeds. The cost of £136. Uh, we've had it proposed by Councillor Pogson. All those in favour? I'll second in favour. In favour. Yeah. Yeah. In favour of the purchase of the poppy reeves. Okay, thank you. Oh, no. That's carried. The in November, yes. Absolutely. Okay. The, in terms of the nomination of people who attended it, Liz, um, what do we need to be aware of on, on this? I'm Conscious that the services may not uh, occur. Yeah, but I'm sure that we'll be asked to lay the wreath in each place, whether or not there's a service. And I think that we should know who's going to do that. And I've, what I've done is just published the list that we had last year, which was hard enough to sort out. I don't really want to go through all that again. I'd rather no, you just... No. We, all, we all know we all need to be sure. What's Councillor Dalton's problem with this? I'd like to know what his problem with, and then we can take the matter in hand. Ah, oh, well, all right. Councillor Dalton, could you answer? He's gone. Oh, sorry, I've muted him. I'm He's muted him. James, what's Thank his problem? Thank, thank you. I'll, I'll explain to you, Councillor Dixon, what, and, and the rest of the council what my problem is. Um, the item on the agenda says, the council is asked to nominate representatives for each of the populating ceremonies in case they go ahead. Last year's representation list attached. The clerk presumes that these wreaths will still be laid even if due to COVID restrictions, there is no public service. Now, um, there are two, councillors for the ward of Netherthong and one of those councillors has served this parish council for decades. So many of you don't know, know, know who she is. Councillor Judith Roberts I'm talking about. She's the parish councillor for Netherthong. She has not even been asked if she would like to either attend the memorial service at Netherthong Parish Church, nor has she been asked to um, attend this, the other service in our um, ward at the Memorial Gardens at the Home Valley Hospital. And I've got to say, I am absolutely disgusted by the actions of the administration of this council in, its, say, tre in I... its treatment of Councillor uh, Roberts. Uh, Dawn, can you just and I would thank the clerk to minute the meeting and not interrupt me when I'm speaking. 
I'll well, leave my, my comments there. Right. Can the clerk um, just respond to how the list is formulated, please? Yeah, well, the, um, last year, Councillor Roberts um, wasn't available to do the Netherthong service because she was actually doing another, she was doing laying a wreath on behalf of the Friends of the Hospital, I think, which is why she's not on that list. And obviously, um, if, she, if she would like to do that, that's absolutely fine with me. Um, it's just that there wasn't anyone available last year. From Netherthong to do well, it. Well, I'm, I'm Councillor Greaves, and I'm, I'm happy to propose substituting Councillor Mary Blacker for Councillor Judith Roberts if there's a seconder and, and Councillor Roberts is prepared to do it. Yeah, I think Councillor Sweeney, are you seconding that? Is that what you're? Yes, that's right. Okay, right. Can we um, vote mm -hmm. on Councillor Roberts is willing to do it? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Hey, that what? Councillor Roberts, are you willing to be the um, nominated representative to go to Netherthong to lay the well, green? I hopefully will be doing, but the thing is, like like the clerk said, but she didn't say, she has not asked me if I will be, it's just been assumed, unfortunately. I haven't um, I, I actually to I I what I've job. done is provide the list of the people that did it last year, and I'm just asking you to decide yeah. what you would like chair. to do. Order, chair. Point of order. Is it appropriate for the clerk to be talking over Councillor Roberts when she's speaking? Mm. Well, you do it all the time. <laughs> order, please. Right. Councillor Tom Dixon is going to speak next, please. Yeah, can I, can I just remind council to speak when the chair advises you to do so and not to interrupt, please? Um, I, I think the, the chair's been given a, a bit of stick here because uh, she's only attached the list from last year and uh, the agenda point is to organise the, the reef lane and purchase on the reef, the reefs. So I, I haven't been asked to play the reef at Epworth this year yet, but I'm not offended by that because it's on the agenda to, to organise it. So if Judy, if Judy feels offended, I can... Um, I, I, no, I didn't uh, say I was... Sorry, sorry, Tom. I didn't Jeff, say can we get a confirmation was... from Councillor Roberts and then move to the vote, please, That's rather than spend more time? Are you willing to um, uh, lay, lay the wreath on behalf of the parish council? Another thong? Assuming you're available. And... Assuming that I would be available if I was going to be available. <clears throat> Then yes, I would. But if not, then I won't. Obviously. Thank you, Councillor. There are certain circumstances, which are happening at this moment, which might preclude me from doing that. Okay, noted. Okay. okay. Well, if people are unable to attend, and they already know, then uh, they should contact the clerk, and um, if other councillors within the um, council will be approached to see if they're able to cover various dates. Um, as as has been said, this list is based on last year. So um, other dates can be made available. Can we, can we move to um, the vote. The vote on this this list? But if you're on it and you can't attend, then please contact the clerk. And obviously there will be communication about the laying of reeds anyway, in light of COVID restrictions, which may preclude certain councillors or preclude certain individuals. So it's a little, maybe a little academic. I mean, look, can I can I just can say I, can I just say in, in defence? That last year, because of the situation that arose, that I laid the wreath uh, as chairman of the Memorial um, League of Friends, that I had myself uh, asked Councillor Dalton if he would kindly lay the wreath for me at Netherthong, of which he was very happy and very proud to do so and then okay, that Councillor Roberts that's reflecting on last year and I think we're conscious of the fact we're very much over time can I just take the comment from Councillor Kath Bellamy who's had a hand up I think it's Kath's hand not Trevor's right uh, uh, thank you Chair um, I don't think me or Trevor is uh, on the list uh, being that here um, was on holiday daughter's 50th birthday with Jane. So, but certainly I would want to lay that wreath at our church. In fact, I have always done so, apart from last year. Okay, can I suggest in that case, that people review the list that's been supplied and contact the clerk 
if they are either available or they wish to be the representative, particularly if it's within their, um, their ward, because obviously it was based on the situation last year. So um, can we agree to, to do that? Because there will be lots of communication in advance of how to lay reads and all that sort of thing in light of COVID anyway. Okay, can we move to the vote in favour of that, please? Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to propose the grants to churches is um, deferred as a um, to the next meeting, since I'm sure it will um, be some uh, discussion and people uh, wanting to share views. Um, and then the meeting schedule is just to note the fact there's some changes to this is item um, Noted. 105, um, which is just the schedule was changed for um, uh, particularly for holiday dates in the future. OK, thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you for hanging in there and um, we will reconvene soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, Chair. Thank you, 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 Chair. Right. Feed it down. <laughs>